March his foes with tanks and soldiers massed upon that Easter day. Dongar with its massive bridge, their means for charging on their way. Ripley and his men remained intent to stop them in their tracks. Days of constant fire and combat left no moment to relax. Blow the bridge or we're all dead was Colonel Turley's stern command. Ripley wasted little time, his mission clear the hour at hand. Heavy TNT he hoisted, dangling from the beams outspread. Climbing high through razor wire while bleeding, this is all he said. Jesus, Mary, get me there. Jesus, Mary, get me there. No time to waste, no time to spare. Jesus, Mary, get me there. Jesus, Mary, get me there. Jesus, Mary, get me there. No time to waste, no time to spare. Jesus, Mary, get me there. Back and forth a dozen times he laid the charges as he went. Dodging bullets from the foe to kill him now, their one intent. When at last he said the charges on those high beams underneath. Lacking means to crimp the wires, he used his only tool, his teeth. Too much pressure and he knew that he'd be gone forevermore. Carefully he clamped each one, then fell down half it back on shore. Just then Major Smart ran up the fuses and their wires found. Ripley laid his back of charge and these few words his only sound. Jesus Mary, get me there. Jesus Mary, get me there. No time to waste, no time to spare. Jesus Mary, get me there. Jesus Mary, get me there. Jesus Mary, get me there. No time to waste, no time to spare. Jesus Mary, get me there. To safety and secure All the men and refugees Their full protection to ensure Just in time with all their numbers Safe and last beyond the town All at once a terrifying boom The mighty grid came down He radioed to high command Ripley with the help of God Had stopped what the aggressors planned When your moment comes And it is time to take your stand and fight Just remember these few words Of Ripley the American Knight Jesus Mary get me there Jesus Mary get me there No time to waste, no time to spare Get me there, Jesus Mary, get me there, Jesus Mary, get me there, no time to waste, no time to spare, Jesus Mary, get me there. I could feel that uh, this was going to be a very tough chore, and as I hand walked out, I began to rhythmically, hand over hand, I would say, Jesus, Mary, get me there, and this rhythm, this simple little prayer, Jesus, Mary, get me there. And over and over and over, the strength came. It just came. Uh, it's easy to explain. It's not easy to understand. And yet it worked. For me, it worked. A perfect example of uh, faith in action, assisting you in a very physical way, in a very tangible way, uh, when you really need it. Boy, did I ever need it. Jesus, Mary, get me there. Jesus, Mary, get me there. No time to waste, no time to spare. Jesus, Mary, get me there. Jesus, Mary, get me there. Jesus, Mary, get me there. No time to waste, no time to spare. Jesus, Mary, get me there.
Oh, come ye all to hear the tale of the Pacha Mama Hunter. Fide la la la, fide la la la, fide la 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 fide la la la, fide la la la, fide la 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 la. For Holy Mary did he act, remember Transpontina. Fide la la la, fide la la la. God forbids idolatry, you cannot serve two masters. <laughs> Through the streets of the Roman Amazon with an exorcistic mission. <laughs> Church, he could see these ugly Pachamamas. The hunter grabbed them all at once to hurl into the Tiber. It was just, it was good, it was truly an act of reparation.
mercy lifts us with no merits of our own, but by her prayer does he descend from heaven's throne. She is the immaculate, the queen of angels, our advocate in Jehovah. Inspired. We love God, we ought to be able to talk about Him. Getting you started on your day. With the latest in breaking news and information from the Vatican to the White House and everything in between. It's serious, it's fun, it's your Catholic drive time. Now here's your host, Joe McClain. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to Catholic Drive Time, keeping you informed and inspired. I'm your host, Joe McClain. So good to be on with you on this Tuesday, January the 24th. 2023 on the memorial of St. Francis de Sales, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. May he pray for us. Here's a question. What exactly is an assault pistol? It's apparently a new thing. It's a new phrase, the assault pistol. There's a lot going on with pistols lately, actually. Um, Pistol braces, bump stocks, pistols being asked to uh, be returned or turned into the ATF or else prison could be a thing. Well, we've asked Brandon, uh, Braden Langley, Braden Langley from Langley Outdoors to come back to the program to explain all of this to us. And especially in light of uh, there's a, a second round of shooting in California. Again, an elderly Asian guy out killing people. What in the world is going on there? We're going to cover those stories all on the program today. Do join us. Madonna is in the news. Now, this is a story actually I mentioned, I think it was late last week. I I think I brought this up in the after show. Uh, Grotesque, blasphemous, horrendous photo shoot. More of the same from Madonna. You know, it's like if you got nothing else you can do to offer goodness to the world, then I guess do this. That's kind of her shtick. But nonetheless, we're going to cover that today. Uh, with Madonna in her Vanity Fair photo shoot, do you uh, do you do you subscribe to Vanity Fair, Rudy? Absolutely not. Yeah, ever? Never I, ever. Um, I see Vanity Fair and I spit upon it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's probably a good way to go about it. Hey, the top ten ugliest buildings. I'm going to cover that uh, because you know what? Uh, society deserves more beauty, and instead we're given more ugly. I want to share that with you. Uh, again, seven dead, one injured in California. Uh, a 67 year old guy is now in custody. Asian fella, like two Asian fellas, older, shooting people up uh, during the Lunar New Year. Hmm, Is that called a trend? I'm wondering. Hmm. The Justice Department announced Monday that they are charging a former FBI counterintelligence officer for violating sanctions on Russia. Uh, This is the same guy who was tasked with investigating Donald Trump and his Russiagate thing. So... Nothing to see there. Move along, move along. 42 Texas counties have urged Governor Greg Abbott to declare an invasion at the southern border. Hey, the latest concern on eggs. Prices have gone up 138% in December from a year ago. Uh, Although egg farmers are saying it's not avian flu, guys. It's the grocery stores racking up the, uh, racking up the, the, the extra cash by increasing the prices. And the makers of M&Ms have announced that they will discontinue their uh, their spokes candy characters who have gone full woke. Please You're kidding. Down. I may eat I an M&M again. I love them. Did you? Yes. Hmm. Okay, well that's telling. I I loved the M&M. Speaking of woke candy, Adrian Fonseca is here on the ones and twos. Good morning to you, Adrian. Howdy, howdy. Praise <laughs> be to God. It's good to be here. <laughs> is it? Yes, it is. I, I love my woke candy. Do you? Mm. It's, it's delicious. I, I, I like M&Ms. They're oh, very man. good. I used to, every day, mm. my little sister's favorite mm. candy mm-hmm. was the peanut M&Ms. Oh, yes. But hang so on one second. I, I would stop on the way home from school mm-hmm. and p- buy a pack of M&Ms for my sister. I did, too. I well, would always. Why yeah. would anybody buy the non-peanut M&Ms? You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Um, I don't know who those people are either. Peanut, the peanut uh, M&Ms are far superior. Clearly. Uh, I haven't had any in a very long time now. Uh, probably it's been, I don't know, well over a year since the last time I had a peanut M&M. But I used to like, do the same thing, Adrian. I would, uh, I would you know, stop before lunch and then after lunch and then on the way home again. And I would buy like a small pack, maybe a pack of a, a pound or two. Yeah. Pack a pound. Of, uh, <laughs> well, a it wasn't quite that. And then I would wash it back it with like a, much. say like a two or three liter thing of uh, Mountain Dew. Ooh, so yeah. I, I have a, mm-hmm. a slight confession mm-hmm. to make though. Mm-hmm. So the reason why I did that though mm-hmm. was because the the grocery, the, uh, the corner store mm-hmm. had a deal 
And if I bought a Dr. Pepper, which is what I really wanted, yeah. they, they had the M&Ms for a dollar. See? It so makes I was sense. able to <laughs> get my Dr. Pepper. Don't be bad. And then don't I be got my sense. sister Listen, a, don't feel a, a bad. M&Ms for a dollar. Yeah, don't feel bad. You are just being frugal. You are being economical, mm-hmm. smart with your money. Charitable. Right, exactly. exactly. So, uh, yeah, praise be to God. Well, as much as I would love to have peanut, the, phew, man. Don't worry, Joe. I'll have some after the show for I you. I craved two things at Marine Corps Boot Camp. Uh, Mexican food and mm. peanut M&M's. What's the difference? Mm. I'm not sure. <laughs> 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 Let's pray. Let's dive in. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known, that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come. Before thee I stand sinful and sorrowful. O mother of the word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now your headlines with Rudy Carlos. Good morning. Thanks for tuning in to Catholic Drive Time. Today is Tuesday, January the 24th. I'm Rudy Carlos with your latest breaking news and stories. Just a news reports, Dems recommend Swalwell and Schiff for Intelligence Committee, despite McCarthy vowing to block them. Eric Swalwell came under fire while in the White House majority over his close ties to an alleged Chinese spy and a rumored romantic liaison between the pair. Schiff, meanwhile, was a prominent proponent of the Trump-Russia collusion hoax and earned Republican ire as an impeachment manager during the first impeachment trial against former President Donald Trump. He previously chaired the Intelligence Committee. Breitbart reports, China pressures Taliban to do more to protect its business interests in Afghanistan. The Chinese foreign minister called his Taliban counterpart this weekend, demanding the Sunni jihadist terrorist organization take strong measures to protect Communist Party investments in Afghanistan. The Chinese government, particularly through its state media arms, has expressed loud interest in exploiting Afghanistan's natural resources. Beijing has invested a variety of, in a variety of infrastructure and economic projects, including a giant industrial park and a major oil deal. Its proximity to the Taliban, however, has attracted the attention of rival jihadis. The Islamic State has taken responsibility for at least two terrorist attacks targeting Chinese businessmen and government envoys in Kabul since December. My Northwest reports, is tipping getting out of control? Many consumers say yes, including me. Some fed-up consumers are posting rants on social media complaining about tip requests at drive throughs while some say they're getting tired of being asked to leave a gratuity for a muffin or a simple cup of coffee at their neighborhood bakery. What's next, they wonder. Are we going to be tipping our mail carriers and dentists, too? As more businesses adopt digital payment methods, consumers are automatically being prompted to leave a gratuity many times as high as 30% at places they normally wouldn't. And some say it's become more frustrating as the price of items has skyrocketed, like eggs, due to inflation, which has eased to 6.5% in December but still remains painfully high. The other day, I ordered something from a military surplus store, and they asked for a tip to ship it to me. I don't, I don't get it. And the Washington Examiner reports AI chat GPT developer gets $10 billion investment from Microsoft. Microsoft intends to extend its partnership with a quickly rising artificial intelligence startup and to invest billions of dollars into its new project. The software company announced on Monday that it was extending its partnership with OpenAI, the creator of the viral chatbot. The investment will total $10 billion over multiple years. You can use chat GPT to uh, write school level essays and answer complex coding questions and math mathematical queries. So very interesting use of this uh, technology. Those are your headline news this morning. God love you. The saint of the day is a blessed Marcellinus of Froli. He was born in 1317 at Froli, Italy. Marcellino Amini entered the Dominicans at the age of 10. He occupies a place of unique in Dominican annals because he was almost purely contemplative. There is outwardly little to record, little to no record of Blessed Marcellano's, except that for 70 years he kept the Dominican rule in all its rigor. That is a claim to sanctity that can be made by very few and is of itself enough to entitle him to canonization. He did accomplish the reform of several convents that had fallen from the primitive fervor, but this he did by his prayer and by his example rather than by teaching or preaching. It is related that he was most at home with his lay brothers or with the neighborhood children who enjoy talking to him. He seldom went out of his cell and could not have engaged in any active works. 
Neither did he leave any writings. His work was the unseen labor presided over by the Holy Ghost, the work of contemplation. To give the, to others the fruits of contemplation is the Dominican motto, and one might be curious to know how Blessed Marcelino accomplished this. In order to understand the need for just such a type of holiness, it is well to remember the state of the church in the 14th century. Devastated by plague and schism, divided and held up to scorn, preyed upon by all manners of evils, the church militant was in need, not only of brave and intelligent action, but also of prayer. Marcelino was one answer to the need for mystics who would plead ceaselessly for the church. He li lived the mystical life with such intensity that he was nearly always in ecstasy and unconscious of the things around him. Some one of his brothers recorded what, that he seemed a stranger on earth, concerned only with the things of heaven. Most of his brethren thought him merely sleepy and inattentive, but actually he was for long periods lost in converse with God. Some had heard him talking earnestly to the statue of Our Lady in his cell, and some fortunate few had heard Our Lady replying to his questions with the same simplicity. At the death of Marcelino, a beautiful child appeared in the streets crying out the news to the little town that the saintly friar was dead. As the child disappeared when the message was delivered, he was thought to have been an angel. And many miracles were worked at the tomb of Marcelino. One was the miraculous cure of a woman who had been bedridden for 30 years. Hearing of the death of the blessed, she begged him to cure her so that she could visit his tomb. He died January 2nd, 1397, and his cultus was confirmed by Pope Benedict XIV in 1750. Blessed Marcellinus of Forley, pray for us. Praise be to God in all things. The gospel today comes to us from Mark chapter 3, verses 31 through 35. The mother of Jesus and his brothers arrived at the house. Standing outside, they sent word to Jesus and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, Your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Hadock, quoting the Venerable Bede, would say, The brethren of our Lord were not the children of the Blessed Virgin, nor were they the sons of St. Joseph by a former wife, as some pretend. But in the scripture language and in this place, we understand by brethren the relatives of Mary and Joseph. Going on to say, Our Lord does not refuse to go out through any the least intention to his mother. He wishes hereby to teach us the preference we should give to the business of our heavenly father before that of our earthly parents. Neither does he consider his brethren and brethren his attention, but prefers spiritual before temporal duties and shows us that a religious union of hearts and feelings is far more lasting and better rooted than any other ties of affinity or friendship whatsoever. Close quote, the Venerable Bede in Haydock's commentary kind of reminds me of that statement, you know, blood is thicker than water and how uh, sometimes we will, we will acquiesce, we will give in, we will, we will relativize, we will, we will make, uh, we will make, uh, you know, con We'll make considerations against our faith because of what our, some of our blood relatives do, some of the decisions they make, some of the lifestyles they live. We will so all of a sudden start to lower the bar of faith to try to get it to them instead of raising them to the bar of faith, right? We will, we will give in on this fundamental principle. And what is more important here? That is the lesson. A Catholic commentary in Holy Scripture says, Here, however, he wished to inculcate the doctrine that the claims of natural kinship are subordinate to the primary duty of performing God's will. Yes, it's true. So much more could be said, but let's think about this. Our Lady, Our Lady is the first to say yea and amen to her divine child in this teaching. It was not her biology that makes her special. It was her fiat. 
her yes, which was vastly more perfect than yours and then mine. She is the first disciple of her divine child. She is the first to say that he saved her. And she is full of God's grace. I want to talk about more on that in relation to Madonna and her blasphemy. All coming up next. Don't go anywhere. Kevin Drive will be right back. Hi, it's your conscience here again. You know you want it. I'm talking, of course, about the 2023 Mercedes-Benz CLA 250C. And on Friday, February 24th, it could be all yours if your name is drawn. Just go to grnonline.com or call 888-784-3476. Tickets are $25 each or 5 for 100 So what are you waiting for? Some atheistic scientists claim we don't need God to explain the universe because science is sufficient to get the job done. But is this true? The answer is no, and here's the reason. Science could never negate the need for God because it can't give an exhaustive explanation of the universe. First, it relies on the inductive method in order to validate its hypotheses. As such, scientists can never be certain they've discovered every piece of data necessary to give a complete explanation. They must always be open to discovering something new that could alter their current theory. Furthermore, science presupposes an existing universe to observe and explain. Thus, it could never explain why the universe exists in the first place rather than not. Science has explanatory power, but not enough power to negate the need for God. I'm Carlo Broussard with a ready reason for Catholic Answers, Catholic.com. Be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to Catholic Drive Time. Keeping you informed and inspired, I'm your host, Joe McLean. So good to be on with you. Praise be to God. Brayden Langley from uh, Langley Outdoor Academy is going to be on the program coming up at 35 past the hour. Talk about several stories in the news in relation to guns, the ATF, gun rules. Uh, is the ATF about to confiscate a bunch of pistols? Ass what are assault pistols anyway? High capacity assault pistols. Like that's a thing now apparently in the news we're going to have him comment on some of these stories to give you the latest information on that. All of that coming up at 35 past the hour. Do stick around for that if you can. But there is a story that came out late last week, actually. I mentioned it. I think it was on Friday. I had, or yeah, it was like Thursday or Friday. I mentioned that I saw these pictures starting to float around the internet of Madonna mocking Our Lady and Our Lord. Very disgusting, blasphemous imagery. And uh, today there's an article out at Breitbart. Headline says, Madonna mocks Christ's Last Supper in Vanity Fair photo shoot. And uh, if you're watching on the, in the you know, YouTube, Facebook, Odyssey, Rumble, wherever you're watching, comment there how disgusting you think this is. Because I do. I think it's totally gross and blasphemous. Here's the article. It says, the pop star Madonna has launched an attention-grabbing photo montage in Vanity Fair, Italia posing variously as the Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ, featuring dolls apparently representing dead babies. Returning to the sensationalist shock art that launched her celebrity in the 1980s, the 64-year-old diva poses as the mother of sorrows for the cover photo, which depicts her heart pierced by seven swords, traditional iconography for the seven sorrows of Mary. More disturbing still for many Christians, Madonna also poses three times as Jesus Christ during the Last Supper, surrounded by the half-naked women, holding up bread in an apparent reference to the Catholic Mass. It is, or rather, in the accompanying interview, Madonna plays the role of victim of vicious attacks by the Catholic Church in which she was raised. In Rome, quote, I was fiercely criticized by the Catholic Church, she asserts, adding that while she was promoting in bed with Madonna, she was astounded to see herself attacked by the church, quote, because it, uh, it because it incapable of understanding how much work was trying to produce something good, close quote. I guess she's referring to the church. The church was incapable of understanding her creative juices, I guess. She goes on to say, quote, I quickly realized that they were, that they were the problem, not me. 
They were the problem because they did not understand that my work as an artist united people, gave them freedom of expression and unity. It was the mirror of Jesus's teaching, close quote. Oh, really? The mirror of Jesus' teaching. Hmm. Photographer Luigi directed Madonna's two-day photo shoot, which reportedly involved a crew of more than 80 people. Quote, in this very special issue, Madonna becomes Madonna again, an icon, not just the embodiment of a musical trend or a style of dress, but a figure of disturbing as, as disturbing as she is sacred, said Oliver head of editorial content for Vanity Fair France. Madonna has made a career out of mocking her Catholic faith in various ways, from portrayals of Jesus' crucifixion to songs such as Like a Virgin, Like a Prayer, and Live to Tell. And her most recent photo shoot will come across to many as a tired, unimaginative retread of her past excuses. Well put, I would say. Well put. Early in her professional life, the pop star chose to make blasphemy a, her preferred stock and trade. And when uh, other gimmicks fail, she inevitably returns to the springboard of her celebrity. Said another way, the dog returns to its vomit. That was my, I added that part. It's not in the article. But nonetheless, there you go. That's the article out of, uh, out of Breitbart. Now, <clears throat> so... I've said this a billion times on this program before. If you've listened at all uh, over the last couple of years, then you've heard me say this. I can somehow weirdly tolerate people, uh, you know, being blasphemous against the Lord, like, say, in uh, movies or television shows, things like that. For some odd reason, I tolerate those more. I, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just, just being honest. But when it comes to Our Lady, I have zero tolerance. If you depict our lady in anything other than what she actually was, I turn you off. I have no I have no use for that. I don't watch those films. I don't watch those television series or they're, you know, like for Chosen, for instance. I know a lot of people love Chosen. I'm not the biggest fan of Chosen. I want to be. I would love to be. But to be honest with you, I just can't tolerate the way in which they depict our lady. There are other issues in that series that I would point out, but that's neither here nor there. Let's get back to Madonna. Madonna attacks our lady in particular. Now, today's gospel, as I read to you a moment ago in the in this segment, was all about Our Lady and uh, the friends, potentially cousins of Jesus uh, out there waiting to see him. And what does Jesus say? Who are my mother and my brother and my sisters? Here, those who do the will of God. So many people have used this verse to attack Our Lady, to diminish her role, her capacity. To say, see, look, even Jesus snubs her. They might also point to John's gospel in chapter two at the wedding feast of Cana when he calls her woman, as though Jesus would be derogatory to his own blessed mother, right? Like as if he would try to talk down at her, let alone where are the feminists that come out in defense of women, like as if though the word woman was somehow a derogatory term. It's not. And it always, when I discovered the, the dignity and the beauty of Our Lady, it literally changed my faith. I gave my heart to Christ and to his church before I understood Our Lady. I still struggled with Our Lady as a Catholic. I remember the first time I ever tried to pray the rosary. I'm like, well, I'm, I guess I'm Catholic. I guess I'm supposed to pray this rosary thing. And I remember praying it. I was in my car and I didn't want anybody to hear me. It was a very awkward feeling to be praying this rosary. And then I remember like when you pray in the, the royal we, right? Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. I remember praying that thinking there's nobody here. It's just me. Why am I? Why am I doing that? This feels weird. So I remember changing the words, pray for me, a sinner, now at the hour of my death. And then I remember reading a book by Dr. Scott Hahn, First Comes Love. And it was my first real exposure to understanding the deeper layers of what happened at Calvary on how our Lord gave to me more than just himself. He gave also his mother and his brothers and his sisters the, 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 the cloud, the chorus, the angelic choir. He gave us the, the saints that surround us every single day that are in the beatific vision, especially at Holy Mass where heaven and earth collide. 
He gave us a family. He never intended to just give us himself. He could have done that without dying. He could have done that without suffering. But instead, he came to do something very intentional, very specific. And so when we read in Luke's gospel and uh, Luke chapter one, verse 20, uh, 28, that the angel comes before from the very face of God and comes to this woman, this virgin betrothed to Joseph in this town of Nazareth. And he uses this very specific word, kekare tomene, hail full of grace. Cornelius Jalapade had a lot to say on this particular, and I want to say, I want to share this with you because it is so crucial and important. Kekaretomene is a Greek word. It means she was full of grace. She is full of grace, and she will always be full of grace. She is more intentionally created, and her role is more intentional than any other character in sacred scripture, and yet we pass by this with such flippancy, such casualness, and we want to reduce her stature because we can't wrap our heads around how God in his infinite goodness and mightiness could create so perfect a creature, so dignified a creature as the Blessed Virgin Mary. Cornelius Lapide would say this word signifies one, that the Blessed Virgin had a gift of grace bestowed upon her by God. And that, in a full measure of excellence, beyond other just and holy persons, for this epithet is applied solely to the Blessed Virgin, to the end that she might be made worthy to become in time the mother of God. Number two, that she by means of this gift of grace was wonderfully well-pleasing in the sight of God and of all his angels and in their eyes altogether lovely and beautiful so that Christ chose her before all others for his mother. Did you catch that? Cornelius Lapide, the great scripture scholar, has much to say on this. Our Lady was the choice. There wasn't a list. It's not like our Lord and the angel had like a short list. All right, Gabriel, listen. Okay, first, stop by Nazareth. There's a lady there named Miriam. Go see her. If she's up for it, fantastic. We'll save humankind through her. But if she's not, don't worry. Go to this village over. There's a, there's a little uh, young lady there. Her name is Lily. Check out Lily. See if Lily, okay, li no. All right, go see, go see Eva over. Th no. Okay, go see Brenda. No. There was not a list. There was just Our Lady. Just that's it. And she had full power and capacity to say yes or no. She chose yes. She saved you. You're welcome. You're welcome. She said yes. She saved you because she said yes to the Lord's will and intention for her life. And thus Christ became, uh, took on flesh and dwelt among men. And thus he went to Calvary and there suffered and died. And at the foot of that cross was this lady who she was told when he was a child, when he was a baby in the temple, that a sword would pierce her heart also in Luke chapter two, verse 35. Her heart would be pierced because this child would be a contradiction. And she understood because she, she knew the scriptures better than you and than me. And if you ask the question, Mary, did you know? Yes, 100%. Yes, she absolutely knew that one greater than Moses would come. That one like in Isaiah 53 would have to suffer and die and be whipped to be scourged, to be mocked and have to die for the sins of the people. And she stood there and silently, silently watched her divine child nearly drowned to death as his lungs filled with fluid, as he struggled to pick himself up on those nails and to rise up, to take a breath, to say, behold thy mother. She is the Kekaritomene. She is the full of grace. She is the Gibira, the queen mother who rules at the right hand of her divine child. And she has thicker skin than you do. And then I do. And she tolerates the injustices, the blasphemies and all the rest. And I'm sure at this moment, she is whispering the into the ear of her divine child, the name of Madonna. Forgive him, my son, for she knows not what she does. Madonna, repent and believe in the gospel because your day is coming 
And if you die in a state of mortal sin, you are going to give an account and look into the eyes of Jesus Christ and have to give an account of what you did and said and taught the rest of this world through your blasphemies in relation to his mom. It's not too late. Go to confession. Repent. We'll be right back. This is Dale Alquist with a Chesterton Minute. How many times have you heard someone talk about how important it is to be progressive? Have you ever asked them what they mean by that? G.K. Chesterton says, progress is a useless word, for progress takes for granted an already defined direction, and it's exactly about the direction that we disagree. We can't have progress until we've stated what our goal is, and then we can determine whether or not we're moving closer to it or farther from it. The real question is not whether we are progressive, but what is our goal? My goal is to get to heaven and to help others get there too. What's yours? Want Chesterton for more than a minute? Visit our website at chesterton.org. Hey, Sita, how do you ask, do you love Catholic radio in German? Liebst du das katholische Radio? How about support it by purchasing car raffle tickets for a 2023 Mercedes-Benz CLA 250? Unterstütze es mit dem Kauf eines Tickets, mit dem du einen 2023 Mercedes-Benz CLA 250 gewinnen kannst. Hmm, okay. How about get yours at grnonline.com forward slash raffle? Kauf eins auf grnonline.com forward slash raffle. Thank you. I needed that for a PSA. Cool. When are you recording it? Right now. Oh, danke. Welcome back to Catholic Drive Time, keeping you informed and inspired. Now, here's a couple more headlines for you. This one is from Catholic News Agency. The headline goes, Controversial Dominican Priest to Lead October Retreat for Bishops at the Start of Synod. Dominican Father Timothy Radcliffe will lead the Catholic bishops and participants in the 16th Ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops in a retreat at the invitation of Pope Francis. Radcliffe, who's 77, served as the head of the Dominican Order from 1992 to 2001. His heterodox statements, particularly those on homosexuality, have previously caused controversy in the Church. In the Anglican Pilling Report in 2013, Radcliffe wrote that when considering same-sex relationships, quote, we cannot begin with the question of whether it's permitted or forbidden. We must ask what it means and how far it is Eucharistic. Certainly, it can be generous, vulnerable, tender, mutual, and nonviolent. So in many ways, I think it could be expressive of Christ's self-gift, unquote, whatever that means. The bishop retreat and ecumenical prayer vigil will both take place in the days immediately preceding the synod, commonly referred to as the Synod on Synodality. Catholic Vote reports petition to DOJ, stop the violence. Catholic Vote has launched a nationwide petition calling on Congress to take action to protect churches and pregnancy resource centers. Catholic Vote President Brian Birch said Americans must demand action as a critical anniversary approaches. This Saturday will mark the one year since Associate General Vanita Gupta wrote to Birch promising that the DOJ would take the crime seriously. Since then, the agency has been largely silent, even as pro-abortion violence exploded following the May 2022 leak of the Supreme Court's decision overturning Roe v. Wade. Go to catholicvote.org for more info on how to participate in this petition. Those were your headline news this morning. God love you. Praise be to God in all things. Thank you, Rudy, for keeping us up to date. Really appreciate that. Uh, Braden Langley is our guest today. Langley Outdoors Academy is his YouTube channel. Highly recommend it. I watch it. It keeps me up to date on what's going on in the uh, gun control lobby out there. I mean, uh, helping us stay aware of where where the difficulties are against our Second Amendment rights. Uh, Braden, welcome and good morning to you. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, we appreciate it. There's lots in the news today when it comes to gun control. There's a brand new term out, in fact, uh, assault pistols, <laughs> high capacity, semi-automatic yeah. assault pistols. Uh, you know, it was just, I was just listening to my boys yesterday shoot each other with, with Nerf darts. I, I, I guess that's going to be next because it seemed like it hurt. I heard crying. There was crying involved. Assault Nerf battles. I don't even know. But uh, what is going on with this term? Why are we just seeing this? 
Um, I mean, quite honestly, the reason that you're seeing this is because it's in California and they already have the most stringent gun control in the entire nation. If you go to Every Town for Gun Safety, which is the number one gun control group funded by Bloomberg, you will see California rated as number one, followed by New York, New Jersey, Maryland, California, I mean, um, all different states that are in the Northeast, Illinois. But for some reason, you still have the exact same problems happening. In fact, breaking news last night, we had another terrible incident occur in California again. And you're starting to see that gun control doesn't work. The problem that we have on my channel, excuse me, the problem that we have and something I say on my channel frequently is we have a problem with the heart and the mind in this country. We don't have a problem with what's in our hands. And that's something that you're going to see over and over and over again. And it's not going to stop until we realize the deeper issue is our lack of morality, our lack of heart and our lack of, to be honest, ethics. Yeah. You know, just as a side note, I pointed this out at the beginning of the program. I found it very strange, horrible to wake up to yet another mass shooting in California. Uh, back to back, both shooters were uh, aging elderly Asian guys during the Lunar New Year. Mm -hmm. That would be called a trend, and nobody's talking about that. So I hope we learn more in the days to come as to what the motives were, what was going on there. Very, very strange, to say the least. But yet, okay, so overall, there seems to be two or three stories in regards to pistols, though. Is the ATF turning mm -hmm. their attention onto pistols now that they've been so focused on, say, the AR-15 assault rifle? Um, yes and no. Yes and no. So what they're specifically referencing and something that you're I mean, you're kind of alluding to is um, something that they call the you know, the new pistol brace rule. It's a rule on stabilizing braces. Now, you're hearing the term pistol, but you also have an AR-15, right? So essentially, what they had previously determined was 10 years ago, actually 10 years ago to this Tuesday, they determined that a rifle or basically a pistol, as you could determine it by the definition of the NFA, the National Firearms Act, could be a shorter barrel and it could be held with one hand. And so what happened was you got a shorter barreled AR-15, which is a pistol because it can be controlled with one hand, it's a shorter barrel, and it can be operated with one indi individual hand using a brace. And they said it was perfectly fine for 10 years. Now, what we're dealing with right now is they changed that classification completely, and they said everything that we've approved prior is now revoked. Now, people change their minds. I, I get it. It's a thing. It's, we were humans. That that can happen. More information comes in the equation. Things change. All sorts of data inputs change. But the big problem is they are now requiring things that were prior perfectly okay to now be a classified short-barreled rifle, which is an NFA item, which typically you have to have a tax stamp for. You have to have a deeper level of scrutiny. And it's no longer a pistol, which they classified. So the big problem becomes, I had a pistol. And now because you changed the rules that you had had in place when I bought the pistol, it's now something different. And it's put in the same classifications as suppressors and full autos, just to give you a, a, a um, baseline of context. They've changed the classification. And overnight, if you don't acquiesce to what they're telling you, you're in deeper trouble because violating the NFA without a tax stamp is a felony. And that's really the crux of the problem. They changed their definitions based off of interpretation. You know, the thing that's interesting to me about this is the use of a language in, in all of this, because they always try to start changing the definitions of words. So you're hearing assault pistols. And I mean, in the past, we heard of ghost guns. And so I have jokingly said, uh, you know, we need to ban all ghost assault Philly semi-automatic pistols. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's true, though, because they always just start calling them these names that nobody really knows what they actually mean. They don't have a strict definition. And uh, so my question is, what's the deal here? How do we parse out what they're actually saying? The only way to truly parse out what we're dealing with here is to look at the actual legislation, to look at the actual congressional interpretation. You have to look at what the legal definition is, because what you're describing is actually a marketing tactic that's coming from gun controllers, from gun control groups. It's not actually coming from the ATF. The ATF consistently has definitions and they consistently go with them. For example, uh, rifles, okay, that's a very set definition. Short barrel rifles, set definition. Pistols, very short definition. But the, the big part here is you've got groups that go on the media. You've got politicians who go on the media and get their talking points from these gun control groups. Moms Man Action, Every Town for Gun Safety, Giffords.org. They put out very concise, concentrated talking points and disseminate them. 
and start to brand these things in different ways, which is why you got ghost gun. Ghost gun doesn't exist. That is a term that has been made up. It, it, is it ethereal? We don't know, right? Um, assault weapons. That doesn't make sense. That's not what those are classified as. They they turn these um, they come up with these terms because they're easily brandable. They are you can isolate them easily because they're scary, and then you can destroy them. And that is that's a lot deeper. There's a lot of things in political history for that, but that's essentially what's happening. This is a big branding technique. And the, the way you beat it, you just have to know what it's actually called and correct it when you hear it. I was listening to Glenn Beck comment on this story, and he he actually characterizes this in a pretty extreme way. He, he's basically saying uh, mm -hmm. some, I think it was 40 million Americans possibly, it was like a pretty large number that are in this category that have these guns, which were completely legal up until this rule. Mm -hmm. And now they're forced with giving their gun over to the ATF or face prison if they don't get that stamp. And he says it's really hard to get that stamp. It takes almost a year, but the rule is they have to have it in 120 days. So is that an accurate description? That's a very accurate description. Now, now the course, that is the worst case scenario. Just, I mean, to be fully transparent, that is in the worst case scenario that, that has the ability to happen is written into law. But yes, they are. It's typically a 12 month waiting period to do this exact same tax stamp prior. Now, the ATF has attempted to assuage this concern and say, we're going to do our own system so that if you're in this system and there's no tax stamp fee, then you're going to have more runway time. Now, I, I'm going to be honest the problem that I have is you now have a different system that is separating out people based off what they have and what they don't have, based on things that you said they were okay, they aren't okay. And I don't have the exact number, like Glenn Beck is referencing 40 million in what you're talking about. But the fact is, I don't exactly know the perfect number. No one knows that perfect number. The point is, it's bigger than two, right? So you're getting into a point now where you have definitely millions of Americans who, because the rules changed, they stayed stationary, but the rules changed and they find themselves in a different legal situation. And that's kind of the problem. That's that's the big crux of the issue. Now, that's that's the pistol brace rule in itself. Now, if you back out a little bit further, there's an even bigger issue that is at hand. And this is something that we've seen significant amounts of times in the past two years. You've got executive bureaucracies, whether it be the FBI, the DOJ, the ATF, the CDC, the EPA. They're all changing the definitions within the congressional laws. And they're using something called Chevron deference, which basically the court says executive bureaucracies, bureaucracies can fill in the gray points in the law but they're not filling in the gray points. They are changing definitions. Like for example, they changed the definition of a receiver. That's what happened with the ghost gun rule. That's how they were able to make everything all of a sudden, something that was legal, not legal. They changed the definition of a pistol. They couldn't use a stabilizing brace. They changed the definition through their interpretation and now it's illegal. West Virginia versus EPA is a case that came out right around the time that the Dobbs decision did and the Bruin decision did. And that was when the EPA was changing the definition of carbon dioxide as a toxin. Hold that it's thought right toxin, there. Uh, Brayden Langley, Langley Outdoor Academy is our guest. Go to his YouTube channel, Langley Outdoor Academy. But we're going to talk about this and what's going on in Illinois. All that coming up next. Hello, this is Steve Gleason with your One Minute Tool for Catholic Evangelism. Here's the question for your non-Catholic friend. Is the Bible sufficient to answer all questions about Christian living and church life? Well, the answer is definitively no. There isn't agreement on scores of doctrinal issues, such as the effects of baptism, who can receive communion, once saved, always saved, abortion, or how about eligibility for marriage after divorce? So here's your three best friendship tools for Catholic evangelism. Number one, fruit analysis. Luther, Calvin, and Zwingli, who are the fathers of non-Catholic Christianity, did not rid the unbiblical practices they despised, but instead turned out to be the progenitors of some 50 denominations and scores of divergent beliefs. Secondly, natural reason. Well, if the Bible alone is supposed to clarify all beliefs, the very fact that such division prevails is actually proof that an arbiter of doctrine is desperately needed. And thirdly, the golden twins. Sacred scripture and sacred tradition will always prevail as the foundation of all Christian truth, doctrines, and beliefs. Remember, identical twins come from one egg. Holy raffle, Batman! The GRN is raffling off a Mercedes-Benz CLA 250C. If we win, that could be our new Batmobile. Great idea, Robin. 
Uh, how do we get tickets? Easy, Batman. Just go to grnonline.com or call 888-784-3476. Tickets are $25 for one or $100 for five. I knew you were good for something. Quick, hand me my bat phone. be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to Catholic Drive Time. Keeping you informed and inspired. I'm your host, Joe McLean. So good to be on with you. Brayden Langley is our guest. Langley Outdoors Academy. Langley Outdoors Academy on YouTube. Uh, you can find it at Langley Outdoors. A great channel. Highly recommend it. It's where I get my news, what's going on in uh, in gun lobby out in the world. And uh, Brayden, welcome back to the show. So you were, you, we caught you right at a moment, coming. and I'm going to give you a chance to sort of finish your point. Um, and, and there's so much more to talk about, actually, that it's in the news today. These pistols seem mm-hmm. to be uh, on the hot seat right now. And, uh, and you were, you were, I want to give you the chance to take off there, but I want to put on the plate as well for conversation. Uh, there's a lot going on in Illinois. Uh, the governor tried to pass some gun control laws up mm-hmm. there. 90-some Mo- percent of their counties uh, their sheriffs are like, we're not enforcing this. Sorry. Uh, but it, yep. I heard a report, 60% of all counties in the United States are not in favor of restricting second, the Second Amendment. The, all states, not just the conservative mm-hmm. ones, not just the red ones, but the blue ones too, 60%. I find right. that incredibly significant. What say you, Braden Laley? It, it is incredibly significant. It, it's massively significant. And sorry to run over on that last segment. I, I get really passionate about this stuff, but hey, I just go, go to town. It, um, the big thing is you've got an overarching government that's stretching its muscles a little bit against Second Amendment rights. That's just that's kind of what's happening right now. I mean, you've got the executive power in the White House that is an anti-gun administration, and they're using the executive bureaucracies the best that they can to flex their muscles because legislation isn't going to happen. That's kind of where we're at. If you go back to your point, Illinois, same thing. When the Bruin decision came down from the Supreme Court, that was a death blow to gun control nationwide. And what we're seeing is a dramatic response in all blue bastions, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, California, Washington, Oregon, they're all doing it. They're all flexing their muscles and saying, well, we're going to do this because we believe in safety, even though it has nothing to do with safety. And it's more about virtue signaling. And they just don't like the fact that guns exist. That's what we're dealing with here. In the case of Illinois, yeah, they passed an egregiously bad assault weapons ban. I mean, horrible. I I was, when it first came out, I said, this will be TRO'd within a week. I mean, it it took like eight days. Um, (laughs) The first lawsuit came out from 800 plaintiffs in Illinois, and they got a TRO or a temporary restraining order. You've got all the 90% of the sheriffs in those counties saying, we're not doing this. There's a lot more of us than there are of them. And these blue bastions, while they may take up a big voting block, they do not take up a lot of land mass. And that's kind of alluding to your point. Well, let me ask you specifically about the sheriffs that said we're not going to enforce this. Exactly how does that work? Mm-hmm. Uh, how, how, is it, how is it possible that sheriffs can dictate the outcome of this? I mean, I just want to – I'm trying to wrap my head around that. I'm glad they are doing this, by the way. But how – from a mechanical mm-hmm. perspective, how is this possible that your state could pass a law and it's the sheriffs that say, yeah, we're not doing it? Because sheriffs are constitutionally elected by the people. They're the highest officer in that county. So because the people put them directly into office, they are not beholden to a city or municipality. They are beholden to the people and the Constitution. That's the simple answer. And do you think that trend is also what accounts for 60 percent of counties around the United States? It's like three-fifths of all uh, counties in the United States are all like, no, we, 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 we don't want to see restrictions here. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what you're seeing. So you've got a population and it's kind of a rural suburban versus a metro or urban. That's what that's what we're seeing here. And when you look across the board at gun control states, the reason that the gun control states that going back to that list of every town for gun safety, safety ranking that they give out there, it's all because of the big cities. The big cities dominate the legislatures. The legislatures affect the entire state. And that's Illinois is a perfect case in point. Chicago wants all the gun control. They want gun control or guns to not exist. But the rest of Illinois says this is part of our founding nature. This is part of our tapestry of our freedom. And this isn't happening. And when the more we have people activate around the fact that 
you know, you are infringing upon our rights, my children's rights, the next generation of continuity of this country. That's when we start to see change because they will meet a political and rational resistance. And that's the important piece. You got to stand up and you have to vote and you have to be active. That's as simple as it is. Well, but when you look at the numbers and you see, like, as I said, Mm -hmm. 60 percent of counties or 90 percent of just the ones in Illinois, it seems bizarre to me that even those on the left, even those that want gun control could just ignore that fact that the majority of its population, of its citizens, aren't in favor of this, but they they're going to cram it down everyone's throats, whether they want it or not, it seems. This is clearly the, the, the few telling the majority what they are to believe and how they are to believe it. Essentially, yes. But that goes back to that whole, that whole premise of you've got cities that dominate certain states. Like I live in Georgia, for example, and as Atlanta grows, the city or the state goes more and more purple. That's just a that's a part of having large metro urban centers that dominate the legislature. And when you have that much power concentrated in small little areas, you can see it when Democrats typically when Democrats are running for election, they don't go to your um, to um, rural areas. They just go from city to city to city because they know the weight tips the balance. You look at Pennsylvania, all, like two or three cities dominate the entire state. Those two or three cities are deep blue, the rest of the state is deep red. And yet the vote counts tend to lean in a advantage to urban. It's just, it's the way that our system is, it's the increased urbanization versus the rural and suburban areas. But at the end of the day, we still have the final say. The constitutional sheriffs do exist. You still have the Supreme Court, which is going to be able to curtail any type of overreach. And you have that checks and balances, which is so essential. That's why we have the checks and balances. There's a lot to this, and the fight is never ending. That's why you got to be vigilant on this. So let me ask you, how does this play into the story of this new ATF rule with these uh, with these pistols and the pistol braces and classifying something as a rifle versus a pistol and whether or not uh, there are going to be 40 million Americans caught into this and having to decide, do they give their gun over to the ATF? Do they go after this stamp? Uh, do you think in the practical rollout of this, Do you think people are going to get arrested after 120 days? Do you think this will be a case where the sheriffs are going to push back? Or how exactly do you see this, the the, sort of the consequence of all of this? Well, so the sheriffs aren't involved in this. Now, this is a little bit different. And the reason that the sheriffs aren't involved in this is because the ATF has statutory authority through the NFA, which is the National Firearms Act, which was passed in 1934. And they also have more authority from the Gun Control Act from 1968. Now, this is the part where you're going to get into the weeds a little bit. And this is complicated. The power that the ATF is utilizing, they are usurping the power from Congress. Congress makes the laws. They're using that principle of Chevron deference that I mentioned earlier. The way to stop this is not at the sheriff level. The way to stop this is at the um, federal level with the legislators in the House. That's the way that you stop this, because they are the ones that can tell the ATF, you are infringing upon the rights and our rights to make laws. Now, as far as the actual implications, So far, the ATF has said, yes, we're going to enforce violations of the NFA, which would be this scenario, rifles or pistols that are now rifles. There are things that you can do in the short term, but understand this is a larger rights interpretation definition issue. If, I mean, to be quite honest with you, if you wanted to maintain what you have now, which if let's say you have an AR pistol, which is what it's classified as, and it has a brace on it, you can take the brace off and you can put on a pistol buffer tube and you you satisfy the problem. Oh, wow. That you don't have to do an SBR. So, I mean, like you have the ability to maintain it being a pistol. But the interesting part about that is the ATF didn't say much about that in that ruling. And you haven't heard about that much, have you? Mm-mm. No, there's, uh, there's a so, lot of uh, so, very interesting loopholes. Go ahead. Right. And, and the thing is, that's not even a loophole. The reason the SB braces or the braces that came out earlier on, they fit onto a pistol brace or a pistol buffer tube. That was the entire point. So this is way in the weeds of how you build these. This is how they're classified as pistols. Because if you have a pistol buffer tube, 
It is considered a pistol in the eyes of the ATF still to this day. The problem is not the pistol buffer tube. It is the SB braces, which are going on top. And they have like seven new criteria. And it is a very, very intricate system. Uh, Brayden, you know, we're running out of time here, but I would like to get your take on, uh, you know, there, there's there been these uh, mass shootings in the past, and you're seeing now uh, the families impacted by these shootings going and uh, creating lawsuits against the manufacturers of the, the weapons that were used. Uh, what do you think about that? What's your take on on that situation, suing the manufacturers of weapons? So, if you're going to sue the manufacturers for something that they did not do, that's not going to hold up. You're, you've got something called the PLCAA, which is a federal law. It is called the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. Essentially, it says the gun manufacturers are not responsible for what people do, what criminals do. Just like criminals or excuse me, car manufacturers aren't responsible for people who get speeding tickets and cause wrecks and drive DUI. Alcohol companies are not responsible if people drive drunk. All of these things are akin to each other. Now, what these families will do, and I feel deeply for these families. I would never want anyone to experience this, but the fault lies in the people's hearts and people's minds that would do this, not in the manufacturer of someone who supports our Second Amendment rights. And that's why you've seen many of these fall short, because the only one that's been successful is the Sandy Hook lawsuit against Remington. And that's because Remington was bought by another company, and then they then they um, they essentially met on the sidelines and said, yeah, we'll agree and we'll just settle. That's the only reason it's happened, and that has brought more and more lawsuits. But on the hard facts, it won't pass. It won't hold muster at all. Getting down to the wire here with Braden Langley, Langley Outdoors Academy over on YouTube. Last question, what about the bump stock uh, situation? Uh, is the bump stock going to be back in vogue? You know, the, the bump stock is an interesting one because – there's now two conf uh, conflicting court decisions at the circuit level. So now we're, we're determining where it goes from here, because quite honestly, with two conflicting opinions, you have to go into a different level of negotiation at the Supreme Court level, because you've got two second tier court systems saying, yes, it is. No, it is not a machine gun. So the Supreme Court will have to get involved in that at some point. Wow. I don't know when that would be, but I don't know if they're going to be back in vogue, because at this point, we're still in conflict and it's working its way through the system. If SCOTUS mm. says, hey, we're going to take this up, we're going to have a heck of a case on our hands. And if they don't, we got to wait for next term. It's really as simple as it is. I don't know. The bump stock seems like a great way to waste a lot of money very quickly uh, and not put your shots oh, where you want them to. So <laughs> finger control is the best, best bump stock you got. Trust me. Uh, Brayden Langley, God bless you. God love you. Thanks for being on with us today. We really appreciate it. No, thank you, sir. Langley Outdoors Academy over on YouTube. Check them out. Make sure to like and subscribe over there uh, at Langley Outdoors. That's going to do it for hour number one. If you can join us in the second hour, we'd love to have you. Praise be to God. Lots to talk about still. We have our game show, the after show. But I want to share with you the 10 ugliest buildings in our country. We deserve better, more beautiful buildings. We'll talk about that coming up at the top of the next hour for those that can join. GRN is raffling off a 2023 Mercedes-Benz CLA 250C. Whoa, Doc, that's heavy. What, are we going to have to, like, go back in time to get tickets? Not at all, Marty. Just call 888-784-3476 or go to grnonline.com. We better hurry, Marty. The drawing takes place February 24th, the year 2023. We really need one of those smartphones, Doc. Hello, this is Steve Gleason with your one-minute tool for Catholic evangelism. Here's the question for your non-Catholic friend. Your only daughter met a fine young man who was a committed Mormon. She now wants to join his church. What's your answer? Well, here's your three best friendship tools for Catholic evangelism. Number one, a reason for no. Doctrinal positions such as the deity of Jesus and the Trinity. Your reason for yes. You deem seemingly moral character as superseding biblical truth. Secondly, orthodoxy. Your answer is probably no. But how and why? Your resistance to Mormon doctrine does not just come straight down from the Bible. 
Bible. It comes from the first five centuries of brilliant theologians, bishops, and popes. These Catholics wrote, debated, and fought for truth. Example, in 250 AD, 311, and 417, three different popes excommunicated three different heretics, Sibelius, Arius, and Pelagius. They denied the Trinity, the eternal deity of Jesus, or taught that human effort warranted salvation. Would your pastor excommunicate a heretic? Well, unfortunately, your pastor can only remove someone from his local congregation. But that's okay. That guy will probably end up being welcomed at a church down the street. I bet you're wondering to yourself, how can I win a 2023 Mercedes-Benz CLA 250C? Easy. Just go to grnonline.com or call 888-784-3476. Only $25 a ticket or five tickets for $100. The drawing is February 24th, 2023. So, do you feel lucky? Well, do ya? Are you on the CDT Insider email list? Hi, Joe McLean here. And every week I send you cool stuff straight to your inbox, goodies that you're not going to want to miss. Go to grnonline.com forward slash CDT and get signed up today. Welcome back to Catholic Drive Time. Keeping you informed and inspired. I'm your host, Joe McLean. So good to be on with you. Praise be to God. Great conversation with Braden Langley. Gun control, all the latest gun control issues. Let's pray for the repose of the souls that people lost in the two California shootings this week. It's horrible. I hate waking up to those stories. The reality is, if you don't want violence, we have to convert people. we got to give them a true and a proper evangelization. Because when we give our life to Christ, we no longer give our life to our disordered passions, our hatred, our animosities, our jealousies, anger, and all the rest. Like Our Lady, we offer it up. And uh, let's pray for the repose of those souls that have lost their lives to gun violence for sure. Uh, Hey, by the way, uh, you can get your car raffle tickets today. Super simple, super quick, super effective and secure on our website, grnonline.com forward slash raffle. 2023 Mercedes CLA 250 Polar White. It's going to be given away on February 24th. Your name could come out of that barrel. It's possible. It is really, really possible. It's a beautiful car. It could be yours for only $25. But if you do the $100 deal, you get an extra ticket Absolutely for free. So you get five for $100. GRNonline.com forward slash raffle. I do encourage you to check out your local uh, GRN general manager and ask them in particular. It's always a good thing to know who they are, to talk to them, to call them up, say, hey, just curious, how do I get my car raffle tickets? And uh, by the way, how can I help you sell a bunch to support this local radio station? Because all proceeds go to support the Guadalupe Radio Network right where you are. So, uh, again, go to grnonline.com forward slash raffle for all the details there. Praise be to God. Uh, Rudy, I'm just curious, uh, just, be- just between us. Okay. Uh, are you Everybody gonna, listen. Just you, close your ears right Are now. you going to turn over your, your pistol, rifle, pistol, rifle thing? You know. Over to the ATF? Oh. I always was tempted to make one mm-hmm. of those, but mm-hmm. I never did because mm-hmm. of the crazy legislation. You never know what it is exactly that you have to do, and you never know if it's going to be okay. So I never built one out. Yeah. I did want one, though. I know a lot of people uh, who have them, but I wonder, because like, in order to get the stamp, oh, we should ask Braden this. In order to get the stamp, you have to like give fingerprints. They probably are going to scan your eyeball now. They put you just on like a list. the TSA wants to do. I mean, it's kind of like how can we get 40 million Americans to just give us all their most detailed information? Oh, I know. We'll change yeah. the rule. I don't know. The fear of them kicking through my door and uh, assaulting my family, killing my dog, is enough for me to dissuade me to not build yeah. one. So right, I build everything in a spec. You know, call yeah. it call it what it is, but whatever. It's too bad. <laughs> it's too bad you lost all those guns in the bottom of that lake. Yeah. Darn, Dang. darn it to Vincent. Lake Mead. I, Dang it. I was, I'm teasing. Oh, wait. It's a joke. I did see a YouTuber, actually, who has an extremely large gun collection. It's part of his YouTube channel. 
Uh, is that what it's called? Extremely large gun collection. No, on YouTube? it's not. But he, as a joke, he like said he 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 made a video where he promised to share all of his guns on one video, and he put out all of his guns in one video, and it was a massive collection. And then he's like, now that I've shown them to you, listen, I'm gonna take them over to the gunsmith and have them all cleaned. You know, it's it's time. They're out. I might as well just take them all over to the gunsmith. So he loads them all into a boat, and the next video you see is the boat out on top of the <laughs> lake, and it capsizes. It goes down. Oh well. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Dang Oops. it! There Darn goes it my million dollar collection. <laughs> right. Aw, shucks. Aw, uh, shucks. <laughs> uh, so in other words, we may see a little bit uptick in the uh, lost the my gun at the bottom of the my, lake. My favorite was uh, whenever they were doing the gun buy. Mm -hmm. And everybody, there's a bunch of people who are 3D printing things that look like guns, but actually were not guns. They were just plastic, and they were turning them in and taking the money. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that's the way to make some money right there. What's <laughs> funny about that too the is uh, the, the buybacks are always. Uh, I mean, they give you chump change for the things that are yeah, yeah really expensive. You don't nothing. make your money back <laughs> Never. unless you're turning no. in pieces of plastic. But you are, but you are a good citizen. So I suppose you can sleep well at night knowing that you're you a good get a, citizen. I would a argue you're a good citizen if you do carry, to be honest. <laughs> True. Because I, I feel much more I feel much safer when I go out and I know that our people that are responsible are carrying. Because, you know, we like to joke about this, but at the end of the day, a good guy with a gun mm -hmm. is what you do need in these kind of situations. Especially here in Houston. Yeah, Just the other day, I saw someone on Twitter uh, post, they were sharing a picture of a video of a dad and his son doing drills with their pistols. And the guy who shared the video said, does any of this bother you at all? And I replied, no, because safety and maturity and proper gun handling is always a good thing. And a dad is teaching his son how to respect firearms and how to use them properly and how to be safe around them. Well, True. What, what's what's wrong with this? This True, is a good but thing. there was one thing that was little I did not like about that. Mm. And that was the fact that their clothes was really weird. <laughs> they had a really strange outfit on. <laughs> no, and that was very concerning. No. Was he wearing a t-shirt and shorts? He was. Oh. How did you know? Oh. <sighs> Adrian. Adrian. Hey, speaking, <laughs> speaking of ugly and beautiful things, uh, I have a list talk about you. me. Um, well, I didn't want to say it out loud, but nonetheless, I have a list for you, uh, the top 10 ugliest buildings in America. Now, it just so happens that the uh, top 10, there's actually like six of the world's most ugly buildings are located right here in the United States of America. So you're going to say Houston. Well, they have their fair share, I'm going to be honest. But uh, I have a list, a top 10 list, and I wonder if you might guess what might be on this list? So, uh, Chapel of St. Basil, at University mm, of St. Thomas, Houston. Let me, let me, uh, nope, that's on the most beautiful list, apparently. Right. Yeah. Is it the Cathedral of Los Angeles? <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. yes. Crystal Cathedral. No, sorry. No, not, not that one. No, not no. that one. Mm -mm. The one in LA. Oh, that. Oh, the Lady of the Angels. Our Lady of the Angels Cathedral. That's, we, that's we talked about that one. Yeah. It is one of the ugliest <laughs> churches. I spent like 30 minutes on looking list. for the tabernacle. I went yeah. into every single room, and it was this one you room. Is there? Find it, or I did find it eventually. Mm. It was a side room. Side yeah, room. in yeah. the dark, you'd miss it. Yeah. Okay, so the top ten ugliest eyesore buildings Oof. in the United States coming in at number ten, the Florida State Capitol in Tallahassee with a twelve point four one uh, twelve point one four percent of the vote. The Florida State Capitol. I've never been to the Florida State Capitol. I'm looking at a picture of it right now. Pretty standard government building-ish stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, all right. Uh, is it is it inspiring? Well, no. It kind of reminds me though, when you drive through old town, old America, and you, these super small towns and their town squares, they have these town uh, halls, town buildings like the, the with like a giant clock, and they're almost always like epic and beautiful. But yeah. like you know, there's like a there's like a grandeur to them. There's like a dignity to these old town hall buildings. You're like, wow, ah, that's cool. Especially up in New England, you'll see a lot of these old buildings that go back two, three hundred years, and you're like, man, that thing is solid. It's still here. It's still cool looking, you know. But these buildings, like the Florida State Capitol, very ugly. coming in at number nine. Ooh, this is not going to go over well. Uh, San Antonio. If you're in, if you're in my uh, 
my hometown of San Antonio, I need you to brace yourself. I need you to just... Like, Judson High School. No, it's Dang. not on this list. Uh, absolutely <laughs> not on this list. But there is something from San Antonio on this list. Take a deep breath before I tell you. Are you ready? I'm ready. Pause. Calm down now. I'm ready. I'm ready. The Alamo Dome. Coming in at number nine is the ugliest building in the United States. The Alamo? The Alamo Dome. Dome. It's uh, Alamo Dome was built uh, when they tried to move the Spurs there because uh, they were they were sh- playing in the Garden, and uh, for whatever reason, I don't think it took. I don't think like they played well. Then they moved, and they, I think they've since moved back. I'm not even sure, to be honest with you. The Alamo. But Dome. recently, there was like 68,000 people at the Alamo Dome, and I'm pre- reasonably sure they were there because of the 10th grade history student of, of the year, Judson High School of all time, best of all time. I'm not saying it was me, but I'm saying who didn't it was show me. up who to I, the I, ceremony. Uh, yeah, but nonetheless, don't fact check that. Just go with so it. I was like, I didn't receive the invite, I, but it was it was it's, it got I'm lost sure in the mail. It's in the mail. I'm sure. Uh, coming in at number eight as the one of the ugliest buildings in America, the Thompson Center in Chicago. Have you ever been either? Nope. Nope. Never been to Chicago. I've been to Chicago. I've been to Chicago. Uh, when I went to Chicago, the tallest building there was called the Sears Tower. Now it's called something else. I don't even know. What oh it's yeah, called. yeah, Sears Tower. I went there, and when I was in Chicago, yeah, uh, I don't know what it's called now though. Yeah, I don't know what it's called either. But the Thompson Center apparently is number the number eight ugliest building in America. Number seven is uh, is an extremely weird. It's got to be also the one of the most inefficient designs too. The U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis mm. is number seven. It's designed like a diamond almost. Like, how much money do you have to waste on a building that has unusable space like a diamond shape would have with all of its facets and, and weird angles, <laughs> narrowness? It's like, what are, what are you going to do with that space? Yeah, I'm always surprised by how much money people spend to make things ugly. <laughs> yeah, they spend a lot of money, which is kind of the point to all this, right? It's like... America, what happened to the good, the beautiful, and the truthful? Uh, the good, the true, and the beautiful. What happened to beautiful architecture, beautiful designs that elevate the mind and inspire the soul? They don't know what beauty is. No, I That's guess not. Problem. Number six, uh, Trump Tower in Las Vegas. Uh, uh, it's not that ugly. It's, it's a ugly. standard. It's a standard uh, skyscraper. It, Why? Just because it's gold? Because it's. <laughs> I wish that'd be cool. It's uh, yeah. Well, it's just a regular skyscraper. You know what's ugly about it yeah. is the uh, the pornography and prostitution in the in the casinos in, in Vegas. So that's another part of what makes it very very ugly. Number five, the Denver International Airport in Colorado, coming in at number five, is the most ugly. You know what I saw recently that looked amazing? The Singapore Airport. Have you guys ever seen the Singapore Airport? Nope. No. They have. It's like a, it's like it's like a, it's like a Disneyland. In their airport. It is like insanely really? amazing. I'm looking for this building in Los Angeles, uh, a weird, mysterious building that jams radio signals. Mm. Sonia has got taken the whole San Antonio thing really personal now. <laughs> she says that list needs to be trashed. The Alamo Dome is beautiful. Uh, the Alamo is beautiful. The Alamo Dome, uh, this is number nine I think on the I've list. Seen that. So for a reason. Oh. All right, coming in at number four on this list, the Watergate Complex. Do you guys, you guys are not old enough, I guess, to remember Richard Nixon and the Watergate. By the way, did you know that the uh, the guys that broke into that office to wiretap the DNC also worked for the CIA? <laughs> yeah, of course they did. Good times. Good really? times, Watergate. CIA. Anybody surprised? You're the best. Bueller. Now they probably just work for Twitter. But nonetheless, uh, Watergate Complex in Washington, D.C., coming in at number four on the list, 18.69% as one of the ugliest buildings in the United States. Coming in at number three, the Verizon building in New York. The Verizon building? 19.9%. Again, and it's not beautiful, but it's just a skyscraper. Well, I think it's a concrete skyscraper, so it's you, especially ugly. If but you reimagined skyscrapers to be beautiful, wouldn't they look like some of the old skyscrapers of New York skyline, like from the 1930s? Well, sure, but the I'm Empire just saying, State like, building, I instance. can list another five, six billions uglier than that, though. Would That's you my make point. them Art Deco or, you know? Definitely not in, Art Deco. No? No. What would you make Art Deco? them? Probably uh, Neo Romanesque or, uh, or Gothic. Gothic mm, style sky- gothic skyscraper. skyscrapers. That'd be dope. Like the. Okay, okay. Well,. I guess that's what they're saying here is these are you communist utilitarian Marxist looking skyscrapers. Yeah, they are. That are uninteresting. Uh, coming at number two, the number two ugliest building in America. Guess. Don't look. Don't cheat. Guess. 
the number two ugliest building in America. What would you I feel say? Like I'm looking at it. <laughs> no, yeah, you can't <laughs> cheat. You already now. You already know. Yeah, I, guess. I already know it. Coming in at number two, Boston City Hall. I'm surprised because it looks that's pretty ugly. If I didn't tell you that that was the Boston City Hall, you probably would have said, "Oh, that's the LA Cathedral." Oh yeah, it kind of does look like it, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, it does kind of look like it. It does look like the LA Cathedral. It looks like something out of Dune. It, it kind of looks like some of those buildings in DC that you walk by on the March for Life. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of buildings right there that look like that, and it's hideous. Well, in DC, nothing is allowed to be taller than the obelisk. Really? Yeah. Ooh, oh, yikes. You know, so is that some sort of like? It's a rule. So all the buildings are like six stories or shorter. A like cult they're, they're really short. Yeah, it a, lowers the uh, mm-hmm. the frequency of the obelisk. Coming in at number one, the ugliest building in America, the J. Edgar Hoover Building, the FBI headquarters, the ugliest building in America, not just because of their politics either, but because of their design. Nice. There you go. Oh, that's one of the DC buildings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, ugly. That's uh, ugly. Ugly. All right, coming up after the break, let's play the game. Let's play and have some fun and learn a few things. The phone number is 877-757-9424. 877-757-9424. Call now to play our game. Have some fun at 877-757-9424. Are there any basic rules for doing apologetics? 1 Peter 3.15 says, Always be prepared to make a defense. Always be prepared, Scripture tells us. How can we always be prepared to make a defense of our faith? Rule number one, pray. Pray to the Holy Spirit that He give you the courage to share your faith and the wisdom to choose your words carefully and profitably. Rule number two, you don't have to know everything right now. Learn a little bit more about your faith each and every day. Read Scripture. Read the Catechism. Listen to apologetics tapes. Listen to Catholic radio. Learn a little bit at a time. Rule number three, Luke 5 verse 10. Do not be afraid. Henceforth you will be catching men. Jesus said this to Peter, but he's also saying it to us. Will you make mistakes and get into tight spots when you start sharing your faith with others? Yes, of course you will. But Peter made mistakes and he got into tight spots. Yet Jesus told Peter not to be afraid. Why? Because if we are sincere in our desire to share the truth with others, to share Jesus Christ with others, then Jesus Jesus will find a way to make good come from even our mistakes. Rule number four, always view a question about your faith or even an attack on your faith as an opportunity, an opportunity to share the truth. Rule number five, don't get frustrated. Catholics often get frustrated by what I call the doctrinal dance. You get asked about purgatory, Mary, the Pope, the sacraments, all in rapid fire succession. Before you can answer one question, you're asked another, then another. Just keep bringing the discussion back to one topic until you've said all you want to say, then move on. Rule number six, never be afraid to say, I don't know when asked a question about your faith. Don't try to wing it. However, always follow I don't know with, but I will find out and get back to you and make sure you do. A beacon of truth in a troubled world. This is the Guadalupe Radio Network, radio for your soul. Welcome to another round of fear and trembling, (laughs) the Catholic trivia game show that helps you work out your salvation by the seat of your pants. It's a 50-50 chance and prizes are involved. Avoid the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Call now to take your shot, 877-757-9424. And now your host, Joe. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to Catholic Drive Time and Fear and Trembling, a Catholic trivia game show that has secrets and agendas that you can't tell anybody. You got to keep it just between us. But if you do that, I promise to share with you all of my hidden secrets. Number one, we like to teach the faith. We look for teachable moments in the questions where you might learn something about your Catholic faith that you never knew before. Praise be to God. Just think about the bragging rights. It's a good deal. And then, number two, we like to laugh. We like to have a good time, a chuckle. And our callers are actually amazing. They laugh with us, and we appreciate that most. And then we give out prizes, which means we incentivize you to learn, to laugh, and to possibly win. Someone's going to do all three this week. It could be you. Now, uh, the good news is, the kicker is, 
the secret sauce in all of this is we don't ask our caller the questions. So they don't need to know the right answers. They may not know any of the right answers, but could still win the game. Because instead of asking them, I shall ask Rudy and I shall ask Adrian, one of which will give us a correct answer. The other will give us an incorrect answer. The caller will then have 15 seconds to make a decision. And with my trusty guidance helping them along the way, they'll make the right decision right. and get into the coffee cup of divine mm -hmm. providence to win this week's prize. Rudy, what could they win? Praise be to God. Our sponsor this week is my good friend, Trisha, over at Heavenly Creations. She's an expert crochet artist who makes wonderful St. Dolls and other Ooh. items. Please make sure to check out her Etsy page. Make sure to sign up for our email list as well, where later this week we're going to be giving out some more goodies from mm -hmm. Heavenly Creations. Mm -hmm. For legal reasons, I can't tell you what they are. But the winner this week is going to receive one of her Saints dolls. And if you want to check out her Etsy page, go to etsy.com forward slash uh, Heavenly Creations Zero. You can also find her on Facebook if you're on Facebook. Thank yeah. you very much, wow. Trisha. Okay, okay. Just between us, though, you could tell me. <laughs> what, what are we giving out? I'm just curious. They're listening to us. What? No, it's just us. It's just, no, it's just you and me. I no one else. Tell you. Oh, something right. about a promo code or something like that. I don't know. Oh. I'm selling, you know, something like that. Can we put that in the email this week? <laughs> of course. Oh, all right. Absolutely. So goodies in the email on CDT Absolutely. Friday email. All right. Yeah. Praise be to God. All right. Uh, let's go to the phones. We are very grateful to Trisha's uh, creations. Heavenly on, creations. Heavenly creations on Etsy. God bless you. Thank you for doing it. Forrest, good morning to you, my friend. Morning, brother. Well, uh, it's, if it's not our good friend Forrest from God's country, it says so on the sign, so we know it's true. How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing well. Praise be to God. The reason, the reason Rudy can't tell you is because mm -hmm. it would give you a strike on YouTube. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> I see. Well, I, our YouTube overlords don't approve. More like the FCC. Okay, the, the <laughs> other overlords. <laughs> other overlords. <laughs> got a lot of overlords. I had a feeling when we were talking about guns earlier that it'd be our, for, our friend Forrest that would be paying <laughs> close attention. But uh, it was good to see you recently, Forrest. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us while Rudy and I were attempting to uh, harvest the good meat. Uh, you, you mean while I was harvesting and I ate? Uh, huh. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, all right, Forrest, you are a veteran, a CDT insider. You know the deal. Uh, are you ready to go, sir? Yes, sir. How do you uh, how do you suppose your chances against uh, Rudy and Adrian, the trickiest guys here? Probably I mean, like five percent. Five percent chance. What do you? That? Yeah, if that, I don't know. Well, let me. Uh, I'm going to guide you. You can trust me, of course, as you well know. Let's mm -hmm. see if we can't navigate these tricky waters. We'll start with Rudy first, who has, again, abandoned his time. <laughs> what does it mean? What? I'm just being Jesuitical. I mean, One day I wear it, and I uh, yeah, don't. Now, I, I, from what I was told by some of the CDT insiders, you could go call Vegas and get odds on whether or not you're going to wear a tie today. Really? Oh, yeah. What are the odds today? Can I? That's how I bet. Uh, for legal I reasons, it a little bit, I can't or? share that for legal oh, reasons. Oh, okay. Uh, but I can, nonetheless, could you tell me who is the patron saint of the Real Housewives? The Real Housewives. Well, that happens to be Saint Martha. Really? You know, she had her head cut off like a chicken running around. Her blessed oh. Lord's in the house. Really? And she's trying to yeah. serve drinks mm -hmm. and food and tea cakes and all this stuff. And, yeah. You know, no good for nothing husband of hers. Yeah, he was Just. sitting. He was sitting there listening to our blessed Lord at, at his feet. So I got it. Saint okay, Saint Martha. Mm -hmm. uh, Adrian, as a husband, you right. probably yes. uh, could answer this question. Yes. Absolutely. House husband. Uh, speaking of no good husbands, uh, Adrian, could you tell me who is the patron saint of housewives? Yes, the patron saint of housewives, as as my wife knows very much. Does she? She knows very well. Could I talk to her? Yeah, no, no, just don't. No, no, no. She's a uh, very private. I see. Yeah, yeah. I she, see. She doesn't have a phone. No, uh, no social you don't media. Let her? Yeah, it's just yeah. Don't, don't come over. Um, oh, interesting. The patron saint of housewives mm -hmm. is Saint Anne. Really, Saint, saint Anne. Anne. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be the uh, the mother of mother. the mother of God, grandma of our Lord. One might say the grandmother of One the mother might of say. God. Or okay. The grandmother of God. Interesting. Okay, uh, Forrest, you got options here. Who is the patron saint of the housewives? Is it Saint Anne? as Adrian would like you to believe, or is it St. Martha, as Rudy has suggested? 15 seconds on the clock. Who is right? Who is wrong? Forrest, what say you? I can't believe you stumped me. Uh, I think maybe Rudy. 
No! Go the other way! No! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I, think, no. I think Joe tricked you there. No, no. Um, I blame Joe. No way. It was your... I, it was one hundred percent Joe's Adrian. fault. It was your it was your inflections that threw him off. Mm -hmm. That's true. One hundred percent. Saint Anne That's is the true? correct answer. Saint Anne. Saint Anne. Martha was not married. Surprisingly enough. That's mm. true. Uh, I didn't think so. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll leave that for the after show as to why. She wasn't Mary. She, she wasn't wife material. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but St. Anne, in fact, is the correct answer. Just but kidding. don't worry, we're going to get you in that cup. We're going to go to Adrian first on this one. Adrian, are you ready? I am so ready. What is the branch of philosophy? See, who better to oh, ask this oh, yeah. than the guy with multiple PhDs in John Paul Sartre? Uh, could you tell in me John Paul Sartre. Uh, what is the branch of philosophy that deals mainly with the question of right and wrong? Wrong. Yes, that would be ethics. That's it. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's very just, simple. It's just ethics. The philosophy ethics. dealing with the questions of right and wrong, mm -hmm. that would be mm. ethics. I see. Ethics. Okay. Uh, Rudy. Yes, sir. Perhaps you might shed some light. Uh, what is the branch of philosophy mm. that deals mm -hmm. mainly mm. with the question of right and wrong? Mm. Right and wrong. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's known as conversus denarius. Oh. Really? Yes. Huh. Interesting. Philosophical term. Ah, the very, category. I could almost imagine you with like a, a category of the mind. If yeah, I'm gonna be clear. honest. That sounds a little Say made up. Say that again. But okay. Say that again. Conversus denarius. Yeah. I, we should. As soon as you say it, I imagine a tweed jacket and a pipe in your mouth, and you're like, conversus denarius. With like a Roman bust on the shelf. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. All right, right uh, Forrest, you got options. What is the branch of philosophy that deals mainly with the question of right and wrong? Is it as Rudy says, conversus denarius, or is it as Adrian says, ethics? 15 seconds on the clock. Who's right? Who is wrong? Forrest, what say you? Oh man, that hurts. Uh, <laughs> is correct. Oh, <laughs> <wow>. <laughs> all the ashes he rises. Wise among <sighs> wise for his years. I mean, he's very young. I oh. we all know he's a very wow. young man, so he's wise beyond his years for going with Adrian. <laughs> yes, for sure. I, I just I just have to ask Rudy. Was that talking about money? <laughs> it's about money? flipping a coin. You know, flipping a coin. When you got to make a choice between right and wrong, just flip a coin. Just like Two Face. <laughs> <laughs> Conversus denarius. All right. Ethics is the correct answer. Praise be to God. You're in the cup. You could win. Let's see if we can get you in there for two with easily the hardest questions ever asked to another human person on this side, or oh, at least in this multiverse. Other multiverses oh, wow. can vary, hmm. but this multiverse for okay. sure. Interesting. Was that clear? Um, clear? Clear as much? Yeah. Did let's you just ask. assume that I was a human? Rudy? <laughs> uh, let me ask you this. Is con con continency, continency one of the fruits of the Holy Ghost? Naturally, yes. Is it? Yeah. Continency. Continency. Okay. All right. That's your answer. You're going to go with yes. Yes. Well, that leaves some options. It depends for on what Adrian. continent you're on, but yes. <laughs> Adrian, could you tell me is continency one mm -hmm. of the fruits of the Holy Ghost? I'm very curious what you'll have to say. Here. Well, considering that Rudy said yes, mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. Maybe? A, trying to see that mm -hmm. there's a lot of different answers uh, I oh, could go with yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm thinking. Sure. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna go with the surprising okay. option really? of no. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Everybody's shocked. Wow. Everybody's like, whoa. whoa. No. For real? I thought he was gonna say something else. But really? I'm actually gonna say no. You're just you're just gonna go with no. That's just what I'm gonna go with. No. I have to. Just no is your answer. Yes. All right, uh, Mr. Yes, no. Forrest, you got <laughs> options. Uh, you are in God's country, so you could take a moment and just uh, say, God, I need your help. But is continency one of the fruits of the Holy Ghost? Adrian says no. Rudy says yes. 15 seconds on the clock. Who's right? Who's wrong? Forrest, what say you? I can't believe Adrian went three for three. No, no, no. Yes, he is. 
No. No, he's not. Oh. Oof. Forrest. I feel like Adrian really let you down today. I uh, to be honest with you. I don't know. I, mean, I, I I was right the first two. I was uh, trying to tell you. Uh, but, uh, in fact, <laughs> continency is one of the fruits of the Holy yeah. Ghost. Okay, I always I'm get the fruits you. and the gifts confused. See, I, I in my defense though, I feel like oh. I told you this is easily the hardest question ever asked another human person in this multiverse. Yeah, it's not I'm one of the gifts of the Holy sure Spirit, but I it is one that. of the fruits. Yeah. And yeah. I get those confused. There you All go again. the time. You're calling me yeah. a human. There you go again. What Forrest, <laughs> Forrest, it was tricky business, and you played, uh, and we had a great time, and we're grateful for it. God bless you, my friend. Take care, brothers. Have a great day, Forrest. We keep keep you in our prayers. Please keep us in your prayers, too. And that is going to do it for the radio side of today's program. If you can join us in the after show, we would surely love to hang out with you directly. Make sure to comment, like, and share on our live video feeds. You can find them all linked up at grnonline.com forward slash CDT. And have you got your car raffle tickets yet? No? Well, what are you waiting on? Don't you like a brand new Mercedes sitting in your driveway? You could win. Go to grnonline.com forward slash raffle for the details. God bless you. God love you. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Thank you for joining us on Your Catholic Drive Time, where it is our pleasure to keep you informed and inspired. Join us Monday through Friday at the same time, right here on your favorite Catholic radio station. Don't forget to connect with us. Just go to facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Again, that's facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Be sure to share more than just us today. Share Jesus with everyone you meet. Bye now, and God love you. Welcome back. Joe has left us to go get coffee. We'll be back in a second. Foreshadowing? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, what do you think about uh, Ghost Assault Fully Semi-Automatic Pistols? Do you have a Ghost Assault Fully Semi-Automatic Pistol? I do. I can't find it. It's <laughs> it's a ghost, so it only appears sometimes. And ah, man, It's ethereal. It's just, it goes everywhere, you know? Yeah, it's, it's imaginary. That's, it's, that's at least it I know it's in my house somewhere, you know? It haunts my house. It's just like the, the gun just like floating around. It's like, ooh, come get me. That's all, that's <laughs> I think it. that's like the one thing. I, I would rather see a ghost than my gun floating. <laughs> 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 what direction is it pointing Where's it at? pointing? Is it going to get me. pulled? <laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of scary. No, but uh, that's the good conversation about the whole uh, guns situation. I really wanted to ask him, I was like, what are you going to do if... You ban a gun, there's confiscations, people take the guns, and then the next administration is just like, oh, yeah, yeah that's illegal again. It's like, so you're going to give Can me I my, my gun, gun back? back? They're going to give you a coupon. You destroy them? They're going to give you a coupon for to, 20 bucks uh, to uh, the Bass Pro Shop. They're going to be like, <laughs> they're going to be like, I am so sorry for destroying your gun. Here's a coupon so you can buy a new one. Right. It's, here's, it's worth 20 yeah, bucks. Exactly. I thought they, don't they wood chipper them? I have no idea what they uh, do I'm with them. I'm pretty sure they destroy them. Right. They sell them to the cartels, bro. Probably. Oh, um, now. Master Don't Baker you remember says, that scandal uh, when we were giving cartels all the yeah, guns? Dude. Master Baker says the Holy Ghost is packing. <laughs> the Holy Ghost party. Packing. Ain't no party like is, the Holy Ghost party. It's packing. Because the Holy says. Ghost party don't stop. <laughs> there you go. Damon, good morning to you. Praise be to God. Good to see you. Doug. Doug 9999. It's been a while, Doug. Good to see oh. you back here. Ken Dirksen, good morning to you. Uh... Aitna, good morning to you. Praise be to God. Paul, our friend from Buffalo. I'm going to be in Buffalo on February the 19th through the 22nd, I think it is. Uh, maybe we'll try to do a meetup of some kind. We'll see. Sharon and Amy, Master Baker, good morning to you. Yvonne, our friend, uh, Lights 10. Good morning to you. <laughs> 10. Praise be to God. He's a B. <laughs> Good morning to you. Praise be to God. Good to see you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us today. You know, on uh, Thursday, Coke. I am Brooks. taking off. I'm leaving. Teresa Nelson. Good morning. Thursday. Well, I'm a coach. Bye. Bye. But I'll be back on Monday. Skunky X. Good morning to you. I'm going to go fishing. 
What are, you, what, are you fi- what are you fishing for, by the way? I'm going to go. So we're going, we're going deep sea fishing. So most likely will be tuna. Tuna, uh, let's they go. Said there is a, there's a chance that we could catch some uh, swordfish. Really? Uh, and they said that would be pretty baller. I heard until one of you gets Yeah, until you get sliced. stabbed, yeah. But I heard swordfish steak is really good. It is very good. I've never had it, but I've heard it's really good. Um, uh, Aitna says, Americans have a moral duty to have a gun. So do Irish people. I'm pretty sure there's a song about it called nice. My Little Armalite. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, but yeah, I've never been deep sea fishing, and I'm so not really a great... So you're going out Thursday. Yep. No, I, uh, I, Thursday we go night? out on the water on Friday. We oh. drive out on Thursday. You know, when I was uh, living up in New England, a lot of the guys would go deep sea fishing. Now, I had the opportunity to go deep sea fishing with my wife's uncle, who would <laughs> take us off of Glock. <laughs> Are you all right? Are you everything okay over there? Teddy Mayberry says, Adrian, will you be wearing a button-up shirt with a tie when you go? Yes, 100%. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no. fishing suit? Yes. He will, of course, wear shorts and a T-shirt. I with, definitely will not be wearing with a jacket t-shirt. with a jacket and a tie. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we used to go out of Gloucester all the time, which was great. So I didn't have to pay for it. But a lot of my coworkers would take these charters, and they would go out, and they would sleep on the boat on the water. No thanks. And they'd go a hundred miles out out into the Atlantic, and fish out there and come back. I always kind of wanted to do that. I thought you were going to do that. That's why I was asking. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing, to be honest. That's crazy. It's uh, for m- my buddy, Sean, his uh, bachelor party. Um, so we're going to go out on the water. I actually don't know anything. I should ask more questions. Um, <laughs> I don't know where specifically we're going or how far out we're going. I, all I know is I was told I don't have to bring anything, um, mm-hmm. just an ice chest for mm-hmm. food and ice chest for mm-hmm. bringing food back. Do you know how to swim? Uh, I can swim a little. I don't swim oh. very well. Well, when you're that far out, it won't matter anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and my, you know, it's funny. This uh, last week, I saw, which is not funny, but I, I just saw this video of this guy that got dragged into the water by a tuna. He was fishing, and he was I he saw was strapped too, in. Yeah. He disappeared. And they, yeah, and he's gone. Like they, like he, they have no idea. Like he's probably hundreds of feet in the water because those those tunas are like what 200 pounds i think he just got lost in the sauce he wanted to reel it in he could have let go then psh, yeah but once you're in the water you think in. he'd let go then right he exactly. must have been like, no, strapped they, yeah they, to get, it. they strap yeah you strap into it so you're strapped into the tuna is a big fish so they strap yeah. you to the boat and they strap the i think they strap the rod to, to you, you. Yeah. i thought they strapped the, the rod to the boat he was strapped here oh, you're supposed man. to be I would strapped never do that and something to the boat. something broke, or he was uh, or he wasn't strapped something to the boat. Wasn't something wasn't right, that. but he had to have been strapped because who wouldn't just yeah, let just go? let go, especially once you're in the yeah. water. Yeah, like, what at, kind at of test least. did he have on there? I mean, oh man, to think that that thing didn't snap. I mean, that's wild. Yeah, it's crazy. You never yeah. know. And did he have a what? Did he have a chance to prepare himself? Probably no. not. Did he have a moment to say, "Jesus, forgive me"? Yeah, it's pretty bad. You can never be re- enough ready, right? Yikes! It's a thing. You just never know the day or the hour when it's your turn. And tuna's really not that worth it, you know? Oh, dude, tuna's, tuna's pretty good. You can bring that fish back and sell it for a ton of cash. I used to I hate, prefer dolphin. I used stuff. to hate tuna. <laughs> dolphin fin in particular. I used to not like tuna, but that was because the only tuna I had access to and knew about was a canned tuna. Dude, there's and no it's fish. so gross. There's no can fish tuna? better. I hate canned tuna. There's but no then I had fish fresh better. tuna, and no I was like, this better. is so good. No fish better than the one you catch. I suppose. The one you catch is always the most tasty. I don't know about that. It's true. Is it's that why true. the deer tastes test, so good? Test the theory. It tastes yummalicious when you catch it. Boy, I used to love catching. We get a lot of cod, but you know the the tastiest fish we saw. Okay, the haddock. The haddock I bought, I caught in Alaska was fantastic. But it's kind of a bland fish. You add flavor to it, and it's so meaty that it always tastes good when you've add flavor. But like right out of the gate, the cusk was a fantastic tasting fish. Cusk? Cusk. 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 Hmm. Let me look this up. And if you add 7-Up to it, pff, candy. It's total Why candy you in your that? mouth. A lot of people would do that. What they, a weird looking fish. The cusk fish is a weird looking fish. Taste mild and sweet. It was tasty. So so good. So good. So there was um, this, there's this uh, thing that people were making fun of. The Someone had um, the, a pamphlet for mass. Mm-hmm. And they're making fun of their, the, um, the, whatchamacallit, the document, because they said there was, uh, it was 
misspell. There's misspelling in it. And in it, the gospel reads, it's, this is kind of funny. It says, the second is this, or here's a, I'll read the whole thing. It says, one of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another and seeing that he answered them well, he asked of him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus said, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord God with your whole heart, with your whole soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. I have these in a Word document, if that would be easier. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Someone must have, like, copied it over and, like, was as part of the email. Hey, I have this in a Word document, and I accidentally included it. In the uh, in the gospel, I was like, "That's pretty funny." It's hilarious. That must have been uh, people must have been like holding back laughter at the mass. It's like, whoops! This is why you have uh, we hire proofreaders, not us, but people in general. Yeah, why not, people definitely hire not us. That's for sure. No, there's a lot of misspellings. Man, oh man, I, I'm the king of misspelling. That's impossible. No, it's not because I'm the king of misspelling. No way, bro! You're just a regent. I'm. I'm, a, I'm I am the utter master of misspelling. It's, it's possible. It's possible. But yeah, misspellings, man. I am so bad at spelling words. It's like, it's like not even funny. I constantly are spelling things incorrectly. <laughs> Alberto said, yeed, I had monkfish. It was a Franciscan. Um, that sounds disgusting. They walk barefoot. That's probably pretty gross. You know what? Uh, blowfishes are really ugly, too. Those are the ones that are like slobs. But monkey fishes look a lot like them. Monkey fish? They have like, uh, they, they look like Ferengi from Deep Space Nine. That's really what they look Never like. Never heard of it. They don't really look like monkeys. They look like Ferengi. What is that? Ferengi, bro. I don't know. Come on, man. You were obviously a Star Trek Superboy fan. Oh, it's a Star fan Trek Fanboy. So Deep Space Nine is something you're very familiar with because the 1990s were good to you. Mm-hmm. They were good to me. See? Those were my best years. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a 90s. 90s kid. You are a 90s kid. It's true. Barely. Ah, uh, so Sci-Fi Mike, what was I triggered by? Was that the, the Madonna thing? Probably, yeah, huh? that was the Madonna thing. Yeah, I get triggered by that stuff. It just, it's just sets me off every time someone... Like Madonna, like it's just wild for people to make that choice, you know. Like what? today, I'm gonna blaspheme. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it so she's egregiously. She's got nothing else going on. What else is she supposed to do? Like, but what, for once in your whole life, like before you die, wouldn't it be cool to have someone like a Madonna, someone like a Nancy Pelosi, someone like a Joe Biden, someone like that have an actual conversion experience? Wouldn't that be like the most amazing yeah, thing? That would be cool. It would yeah, be, but it would never happen. Yeah, well. Well, maybe. I mean, God's possible, God yes, yeah, but likely but no. Chances are not likely. Yeah. Chances are not likely. I mean, it's it's sad because, like you said during your uh, your monologue, monologue, um, it's it, their their souls are in such grave danger because they are actively choosing like like rudy just said like imagine like you're, you're you choose you wake up in the morning like i choose to blaspheme god today right like oh my goodness like imagine yeah um it was making me think while you were talking about um because i i was mentioning that i gave a talk uh, to um saint Teresa's on on the vulgar world and professor plinio talks about it extensively about the vulgar people and he's like i'm not talking about he's like when I, when I talk about the vulgar man, I don't mean the man who sees someone uh, who act, you know says uses slang words like cool, right on, got it. He's like, those things giga are, Chad. yeah, words like giga chad, <laughs> based. And he's like, yeah, he said, those kind of language, it's not great, but, it, you know, you kind of just say those things and it's not the type of person I'm talking about. And he's like, when I say the vulgar person, I mean someone who is pleased with identifying himself with what is evil and what yeah. is bad. He's yeah. like, he's the kind of person who sees the chariot, the the royal carriage of Norway, which if you've ever seen it, it's like solid gold. And it's like, it's, it's stunningly beautiful. Whoa. And uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Master Baker said, I write love letters to my wife with a fountain pen. Ooh. That's Bro, awesome. stop sharing that publicly. My wife's gonna expect this. That's good. She's, you're up in the bar, bro. So check yeah. this out. This is the royal carriage of Norway. That's amazing. It's beautiful. That 
And he, uh, Professor Plinio, used this as an example. He's like, the vulgar man hates this. He yeah. hates it because right. not and, and not out of envy. Yeah, oh, yeah. 100%. And he said the the envious man would be would in a sense be better because then you're like recognizing that something is good mm. when you want it for yourself and maybe you want to hate you want it destroyed but it's because you recognize that it's good that's why you hate it. But he says here he says uh, if he sees a carriage passing, let us suppose the gala the gala carriage of the queen of Norway, mm. magnificently gilded with paintings. De- decorating its doors and curved glass windows of a crystal pulled by a pair of stately horses and driven by one or two postillions. The idea that comes to his mind is to throw a stone at it. He feels the need to destroy it. Yeah. This is in part the mentality of so many tourists who visit the statues of, I don't even know who this is, and break their fingers <laughs> or write their names on the stones. Mm. They feel the need to shatter what is in order to damage what is right. elevated. Yeah. This mentality is worthy of complete rejection because it professes a love of evil for the reason that it is evil. This is properly speaking to love the evil for its evilness, the dirty for its dirtiness, the error because it is wrong. And he goes on and talks about its relation to Barabbas and the uh, the. Well, just look at the accusations it. against church by Protestants. Oh, look how look how lavish and expensive the Vatican is, and all of its. Uh, you know, finery, its uh, its ornaments, and it, all of its luxury. If it could just sell all that stuff, it could feed the poor. You know what? The church deserves the grandeur because it, it's beautiful. The public liturgy is beautiful, and it's giving God what is due to him. And so for the same reason, how much more the mother of God ought to be perfect, ought to be the most perfect creature and creation uh, God has ever made. And just as if the Ark of the Covenant was laden with pure gold, how much more perfect ought to be the Ark of the New Covenant, right? You know, if if you have to take your shoes off in God's presence at a burning bush, well, then what does that mean about the presence of our Lord inside the womb of Our Lady? Even after he was born, by the way, uh, you know, uh, Father Calloway likes to point this out, there still remains cells of the Divine Child inside the womb of Our Lady to this very day, you know? So she is still the tabernacle of the Lord. Um, People can't seem to get this. Like... Not the poor you will always have with you, but you won't always have me, our Lord's words. So the, the beautiful, the good, the true, and the beautiful are always under attack, which is kind of the reason why I went to the 10 ugliest buildings today, to kind <laughs> of demonstrate how bad society is, how dystopian, how Marxist and socialist, that uh, our buildings are just these monuments to man and not, to, uh, not, a, not a, div- uh, a nod to the divine. They're just giant, ugly structures that aren't inspiring. I was going to mention, uh, E. Michael Jones talks about some of these government buildings uh, in the Brutalist style, and he thinks that uh, they were built that way so that you would feel like they were going to fall upon you, like they're so imposing on you. Mm. And I think that was like a a design choice on purpose for them. Yeah, when I was in Poland, I mentioned this before, um, the... Where we were giving the tour of the area in Krakow, um, or was it Katowice? I forget. And the um, the apartments were built in the brutalist style by the communist when they came in, and we were told that uh, yeah, the after the the brutalist architecture was put in as their apartments where everybody was living in them and and they were required to walk by them and see them. They said, and then you go a couple blocks over and they still have the old apartments and they're very beautiful, very stunningly gorgeous actually and you're um and they were told uh they, we were told that yeah this the suicide rates for where the brutalist architecture was and where people were living in these brutalist apartments yeah they, they skyrocketed in terms of the uh suicide rates and so yeah i mean this is it's a big deal the we are made for beauty and when we're taken and that's taken away when when the good the true and beautiful is taken away from us mm. we lose part of ourselves we lose part of the divinity because uh, beauty truth and goodness are reflections of yeah. of god yeah amen hey i sent you uh, a link can you put that on for me yeah let me see so uh, i want to switch topics a little bit while we still have some time let's talk about eggs eggs how many people love eggs raise, yeah. your, hand. raise your hand raise your hand if you love eggs eight, 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 eight eggs I only like seven eggs. oh you want uh, the sound other yeah, I need the sound of it. So there's a uh, egg prices are skyrocketing, and there's uh, avian flu is kind of getting the the biggest blame on that. But there's a lot of farmers uh, pushing back on that narrative, saying it's not the avian flu. 
that's causing this. And one such guy that's starting to kick up waves in Alberto's backyard is this Ian Humphreys, the Welsh farmer. Uh, I think he has a YouTube channel, too. And he, he's been putting out these videos. He's been interviewed by the BBC and other networks over there, and they've been, uh, they've been taking his words and slicing and dicing them up. But he has repeatedly said on his, on his Twitter uh, channel and his YouTube that um, avian flu is not the cause. Exactly, Joe. Of the egg shortage and therefore the spike in prices. It's because a poor birds excuse. birds are not real. Because birds aren't real? They are demons? What are they? What? They're robots. Sorry. In this multi-universe, what, what are they? Excuse robots. me? What did you say? Eggs. Excuse me? Don't go foul on me here, okay, bro? Hello, it's me again. I'm sorry to be having to do this. I'm sure you're fed up of seeing my face and my eggs, but I've just got to get it out there. <laughs> so the mainstream media can't seem to wrap around their head around the fact that it's the supermarket's fault for this egg shortage, not avian flu. Really? So yes, my costs have increased. Yes, yeah, feed has increased, electricity has increased. But the supermarkets aren't paying us at fair price to cover the costs. They've raised the price for you, the consumer, so you're already paying more for your eggs. They've raised the par price by a minimum of 45 pence, but that hasn't come down to us, the farmers, so we're still getting paid the same. And I don't understand. The media can't seem to get their head around it. They're like, oh, yeah, bird flu. It's a load of cobblers, yeah? Bird flu has not killed as many birds as we haven't ordered. Producers aren't ordering birds to go into laying flocks because we can't afford to. That's the problem. If the supermarkets, instead of upping the price for you and leaving our, our price the same, if they upped the price for you, which they already have done, and gave us some of that price, then we wouldn't be making a loss producing eggs and the shelves would still be full. There was bird flu last year, and there wasn't an egg shortage. It's 100% the supermarket's fault. I've done an interview with BBC and ITV, and they've completely glazed over that. They've cut me into snippets saying my, the cost of production has increased. They've wow. made a, BBC and ITV have made an absolute mockery of farmers, and it's disgusting. It's an absolute joke. We need to get this guy it's, on. It's horrendous. This is 100% the supermarket's fault. All they need to do is pay producers a pay, fair price for their eggs and the shelves would be full. That's it's good. scandalous. So uh, I have one question for Mr. Ian Humphreys. We've got to get him on so I can ask this question. Um, Mr. Humphreys, exactly what is the difference between a pence, a bob, and a quid? I need to know. Because <laughs> <laughs> as an American, as a Yank, it's really about? confusing. Uh, bob, pence, quid. Are they Mike the pence? same? Are they different? I don't even know. You can buy things with Mike Pence? Yeah, see? Deeper questions have to be asked and all this. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. We've already played that joke earlier. Now, uh, I find this fascinating. It kind of reminds me of a lot of the... I, the other day, I was watching one of the cattle ranchers that I tend to follow. Uh, and we actually interviewed that guy a year ago, maybe. We had him on. We had him on a couple of times. And he talked about shenanigans in the cattle market in the United States, how there's four slaughterhouse producers and all the cattle ranchers sell to these four and there was a lot of pricing manipulation going on they were collaborating together to inflate pricing and it was the rancher who got stuck with the tab americans paid more ranchers got less the producers got the bulk same thing sounds like it's going on with this guy who was, was talking about the supermarkets in the uk but what are the chances that there's an egg issue that's the same in America? Although I watched a report, I think it was on Fox News, and they talked about uh, there was like a million birds that had died or whatever, and that equates to like 18,000 dozen egg cartons or whatever. I don't remember, but nonetheless, it sounds to me like there's more shenanigans and price manipulation going on in these markets at a time where inflation is still very high. How ethical is that? Talk about the philosophy of ethics, right? How ethical is that? You know, I'm a free market capitalist, but the bottom line of business is people. It is not your pocketbook. It is not the bottom line of your bank account. Taking care of your people internally and externally, doing the right thing, leveraging free market capitalism to create resources that brings people out of poverty, taking care of people is the point to free market capitalism. Uh, otherwise, you're stuck with socialism, 
Uh, and socialists' biggest critique of capitalism is what? Crony capitalism. And is this not that? Which is why we have to seize the hens by the means of production. I see where you're going with this. We have to seize We have to nationalize hens. it. We got to... Exactly. 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 So that's a load of cobblers, bro. Uh, I left, that cobbler was a good pipes? line. I may steal that line. It was so good. Like, I wonder what kind of cobbler he's Load of about. cobblers. Blueberry cobbler? Uh, Peach Yvonne, cobbler. Yvonne Oof. says they slaughtered good. the birds. Remember when they had to slaughter the pigs during 2020? Like, a no, lot of animals had to be slaughtered because the slaughterhouses were closed. Yeah, they did that at the at the altar. Do you remember that? <laughs> That's a different story. Tangentially related. Tangentially related. They threw them off the cliff. And they had the to ocean. get rid of the chickens because they were ghost assault, fully semi-automatic chickens? <laughs> High capacity. High capacity Oh, chickens. that was another story. Okay, another bird-related story was I was watching Redacted, and the Redacted was talking about uh, this the bird story today. And, uh, well, wrong, wrong video. Uh, and they were talking about the, the bird story today. And one of the points they brought out was there was a whole bunch of uh, tick, chicken raising TikTokers. Chicken raising. Yeah, you can share my desktop here. And uh, basically, this one lady on TikTok who raises chickens, she said, listen, my, my, my chickens typically produce an egg a day. Hmm. And, uh, but lately, she goes, I'd be, I'll get like 10 eggs a week out of a chicken. But lately, I've only been getting one egg a week. What is going on? So after dealing with this, she's like, I'm going to get creative and see if I can figure this out. So when she went to the farm store or farm feed place where she buys her chicken food. And she decided instead of buying the prepackaged chicken food, she bought the components of chicken food and made her own. She oh, changes man. the food. And all of a sudden, they start producing an egg a day again. That is so interesting. And then the host of Redacted, who played this video, they said after watching this, they did the exact same thing. They made their own food, and their chickens started producing eggs every day again. Hmm. That is fascinating. So what? Well, hmm. what are the implications there? Hmm. You know, I think I'm so many of our problems this come is down a, to our food. And it's kind of weird. I'm not saying this is a chicken egg conspiracy. But where is the tinfoil uh, miter when you need it? Or actually, it's our case, it's a bread. Beretta. But uh, do we need a tinfoil? We might need We haven't been elevated. Uh, well, True. I've been told. Anyway. Um, Foreshadowing? So, yeah. There is an interesting take here, right? Uh, is there something in the food? Now, we did see that there was, in fact, uh, stories out that said, hey, don't worry about all those mRNA vaccine stuff we're just going to put it in the food don't even stress about this we're just going to we're going to give it to animals and we're going to put it in the food is that here i don't know i have no idea zero knowledge on the subject other than these chicken farmers are all hanging out talking and saying listen i'm we're seeing some issues here so good times coming i don't know maybe but uh you got to love the chickens nothing like a good chicken dude i eat so many eggs I I go buy the eggs like I, when I go I get like three dozens at a time just for me for the week. I don't really care for eggs. I like the tenders better. The tenders. Where are like the tenders? Candies? Where are the tenders on the chicken? I don't know. That's a good question. Hmm. 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 <laughs> what part of the chicken is the tender? I don't know. <laughs> Deep. Is it is it chicken? <laughs> and is it chicken? Is the one of the questions one should ask at like say a Chick Fil A for instance or oh, Kentucky good. Fried Chicken? Man, I want to go Chick Fil A. Is it? Chicken. Mm. <laughs> that should be a game show. <laughs> Welcome back to Is It Chicken? You, a couple you, months ago. They blindfold you, you taste it, you're like, is this chicken? A couple you know, months ago, says, I had a, like uh, a sympathy pregnancy craving. What? And the? it was uh, orange chicken. That's a thing. <laughs> no, I'm making it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the uh, you know, that actually would be a kind of fun thing is like you get a bunch of different kinds of. Um, Foods that everybody says taste like chicken. Like alligator. Like alligator yeah. and whatever else. People are like, yeah, it tastes like chicken. Tastes and then like chicken. You have a taste test to see if, if people can identify what they are. <laughs> hey, why do they call it chicken fried chicken? Because you fry it the way you fry a chicken. Mm-hmm. That mm. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it makes mm -hmm. complete sense. Uh, Master Baker says the tenders are behind the breast. 
<laughs> really? Seems seems reasonable. Seems reasonable. Oh boy, I don't know. So, can you trust your food sources? They're getting. No. It seems no. like it's getting worse Next and worse. And worse. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Next. I, uh, earlier this week, the mm-hmm. uh, the uh, was it the FDA? FDA? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Whoever takes care of the food, mm-hmm. they reorganized the way that organic is labeled. So. That gives you a clue that organic things weren't actually organic. They just changed the name of things. Yeah, they, uh, man. I hate and there that. are some loose rules, like what 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 constitutes free range? Yeah, that one really bugs me. Yeah. Or organic. It's like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, they're organically fed. Mm-hmm. What are they fed? Soy. It's yeah. organic soy though. Yeah, yeah. buddy. And uh, what's in the natural? What's in the natural and flavoring? What is natural what, flavoring? Is it now? Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, what was what that story about using aborted fetal cells to te- to uh, to do taste Enhanced. testing enhancements Yikes. on natural flavoring ingredients on products, food products? And they sneak it through that little ingredient, natural flavor. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's pretty diabolic what goes on in the world. It's almost as if the prince of this world. Is in charge of things. Un- oh man! Until maybe at some point when the Lord binds him again. That is such a good point. I, I'm doing the mm. Bible in the Year podcast with uh, Father Mike Schmidt. Really? And I got to the uh, the, the, the the point uh, in the Book of Job mm-hmm. where the devil says, "I've been going up and down the world and side to side." And I'm like, "Oh, I I feel that yeah. he's here. He's everywhere." Yeah. Up and down, side you know, side, all around. Um, oh, man, I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to... Good times. Oh, we're out of time. Oh, uh, okay. it to oh Jonathan Rumi. I found out yeah. over the weekend mm-hmm. that Jonathan Rumi mm-hmm. is good friends with Father James Martin. No. Mm-hmm. Didn't mm-hmm. see that coming. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <clears throat> Controlled I mean, opposition. Anyway, I'll leave that there. Uh, this is another news covered for you so that you don't have to look it up. Yeah. Don't fact check anything. And say. tomorrow, mm-hmm. a surprise. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's definitely a surprise. <laughs> God bless you. God love you. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Do share us with a friend. And we'll see you guys back here tomorrow morning. Jesus is a friend of mine. Jesus is my friend of mine. I have a friend of Jesus. Jesus is a friend of mine.